Good evening and welcome to the Arizona Deliverance Center in Phoenix, Arizona. Welcome to all of our YouTube watchers. People will be straggling in here. This is seminar night. We're going to do a teaching on familiar spirits tonight. This is part one. And uh, we'll probably take questions at the end <coughs> instead of taking them as we go so that we can get through more of the material if that's okay. And uh, I guess I'll just start now then. Uh, part two of this seminar is on November 29th. That would be the last Friday of the month. Remember, I'm on the radio every day of the week and twice on Sundays on 10, 10 a.m. here in Phoenix. And uh, that's the link to our archived radios, past radio shows. And then I'm also on the secular internet uh, radio station, Dark Sky Radio. Last week I had uh, 63,000 listeners. I went down 1,000 from the last week, so I got a boost set back up. Uh, if you'd like to help us uh, financially and you shop on Amazon, you could go to Smile Amazon and put in our ministry name and then they'll donate 1.2% of everything you buy to our ministry. It won't cost you anything. And you would be helping us out. They send us a check once a year. Tonight's teaching and next month's teaching will be on our YouTube channel, number one, House of Healing AZ. Uh, please uh, send me an email at mike at hardcorechristianity.com. I will send you this miracle list. 90% of the people get the list and don't do it. But the 10% that do do the list, they, they all get delivered. They all get healed. So... I send it out anyway. <laughs> Anybody who wants it, I send it out. We have one for mentally ill Christians, and we have one for non-mentally ill Christians. You just follow it step by step, and you can get delivered. And I put the testimonies up on the website. You click the testimonial button on the website, and you see all these testimonies, dozens of them about people who have gone through the list and got healed. I wrote three books. The one on Satan there is under revision, but I wrote the other one on healing, the other one on curing mental illness. Those are in the bookstore. We have a deliverance training course on the website. There's 18 sections to it. If you're ever interested in getting into this kind of ministry, which most people aren't, but a few small percent are, uh, you've got to be kind of a different kind of a Christian to get in this kind of ministry. This isn't for everybody. Uh, it should be for everybody, but unfortunately it isn't. And uh, you got to have some thick skin to be in this ministry. So if you're a person who's shy or insecure, uh, recommend you do like a church bus ministry or something like that. This kind of thing's not going to work for you. Maybe greeter, something like that. You know, uh, if you're a spineless, gutless Christian loser, don't even get close to this ministry. For God's sakes, come here and get delivered. Don't go into this ministry. It is not for the faint of heart. See, when you talk about this ministry, you get zero amens. That's how bad it is. <laughs> Thursday nights, Rick and the ministry team are killing it in here. Our healing rooms on Thursday night at 7 o'clock. Our donation boxes are on the doors. All the doors are now locked. You can donate on the website. And I thank you. Thank you for all the donations that have come in. We get dozens and dozens of donations off the website. So grateful for them. We have someone donated cactuses to us. And uh, you can have one. For any donation you want to pay for it, just pick out the price and take the cactus home. They're yours. They're right out here, in fact, in the parking lot. Okay. And, oops, 
Today's uh, teaching, of course, is based on the, I use the King James Bible. And uh, this KJ3 Bible is the best Bible I've ever seen. Translation I've ever seen of the New Testament. I sell it in the bookstore. And uh, that one is, from, in my opinion, number one. It's the best one I've ever seen. All right. The future rulers of the world. Uh, we're going to expose them tonight. Uh, the whole planet Earth is being uh, molded by the devil, and he's taken over every single country, and uh, he's using religion to do it, and he's using these spirits to do it, these spirits. Hey, you mind shutting that door? Uh, you shut that door there, would you? Thank you. They're using these spirits to do it. These are the chess players of the spirit world they are unbelievably intelligent and extremely dangerous <coughs> uh, here is the main scripture in the bible about uh, this section of the kingdom of darkness you need to have this one in your bible repertoire there shall not be found among you anyone who makes his child pass through the fire the child abusers child killers there shall not be found among you anybody who involved in divination or uh, observer of times or who is involved with enchantments or is a witch or is a charmer or a consulter of familiar spirits or is a wizard or a necromancer. That would be a what? Yeah, somebody talking to dead people. In the Old Testament, uh, witches were executed. In fact, in Israel, there was a standing order that all witches were to be to receive capital punishment. And we'll see uh, a little later here. King Saul really blew that one. What's the long-term goal of uh, these spirits taking over the planet? To hand the planet over to this person right here. He's going to rise somewhere no one knows where he's coming from we do know the antichrist comes from the middle east we don't know where the false prophet comes from there are no prophecies about the false prophet he just appears on the scene like out of nowhere and he's only mentioned one time in the bible and it's in first thessalonians uh, second thessalonians it said there then shall that wicked one be revealed whom the lord shall concern with the spirit of his mouth and destroy with the brightness of his coming Whose coming is after the energia of Satan, the energy of Satan, with all dunamis, supernatural power, Samian miracles, and pseudos, false, terrorists, uh, supernatural events. The false prophet is going to have supernatural powers that no one else has ever had. He'll be the greatest occult artist and the greatest. Uh, Miracle worker for Satan that ever lived and he's going to trick the entire planet or most of it and persuade them to Follow the Antichrist and take the mark of the beast The only way to set him up properly is to have the whole planet Go to the occult and mysticism and spiritual things which it's now doing spreading all over the globe so that he will rise to power and everybody will feel comfortable with his occult practices and his supernatural power they'll just fall in line with him quickly and easily and then he will push everybody over to the antichrist <coughs> revelation chapter 13. let's take a look at these familiar spirits and see how powerful they are they're really capable of doing supernatural things saul said to his servants as you know god wouldn't speak to saul anymore and many born-again Christians kind of get into that spot. They go through kind of dead periods in their life where they can't feel the Holy Spirit and can't sense the Lord. And uh, if you'll kind of audit yourself, you will notice that uh, something kind of snuck in there and is blocking your, what the Greek word is, koinonia, your communion of the Spirit. Okay? So I have many people come in for counseling that have these blockages. Uh, none of them are as bad as King Saul, 
But if you have a blockage and you can't hear from the Lord anymore, there's a reason for that. It's not, it's not God withdrawing from you. There's something in your life blocking it. Because Jesus said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. The Holy Spirit never leaves you and he never walks away from you, even if you're sinning. But the presence, the manifest presence of the Spirit can be blocked by sin or false belief or rebellion or something going on in your life blocking your anointing. Okay? If you'll take a little audit of yourself, you can find out what that is, remove that blockage, whoosh, he flows again. Saul didn't do that. He just kept on sinning. And uh, they were supposed to execute all the witches in Israel. He didn't do it. And he said uh, he knew they were still there. So he asked his servants to find him one. Find me a witch. I need to find out what to do. As you know, he was facing battle. He was going into battle and God wouldn't answer him anymore. The servant said, Behold, there's a woman that has a familiar spirit in Endor. And then they got to Endor, and then Saul uh, comes to the woman, and she says, I don't, I don't really want to do this, because King Saul said we're all supposed to be executed. And Saul gives her a comforting word and assures her that she wouldn't be executed. So she decides to help him, and she says, Who do you want me to bring up? Who do you want to talk to? And he asks for Samuel. And... Uh, the woman started to see supernatural events occur. She started to be afraid. And he keeps pressing in to find out what's going on. The woman said, I saw Elohim, gods, ascending out of the earth. This uh, Hebrew word Elohim is a word that means gods, and it can be used for the God or it can be used for false gods. you got to look at the context of the text to see which they're talking about. Here it's talking about demon gods, and she says she saw them ascending out of the earth. I'm assuming they're coming out of hell, but I'm not exact. You know, I don't know that for 100 percent fact. And he goes, "What shape is he or form is he?" She says, "He's an old man, and he's covered with a mantle." Now here you see these familiar spirits with supernatural power able to impersonate dead people. They do it all the time on TV, mediums and. Uh, these type of people are able to channel supposed dead people to comfort uh, living living relatives. It's all a sham. It's all fake. You can't contact anybody who's dead. You'll never see them again. They cannot come here, and you can't go there. Once they're dead, they're gone. If you've been seeing Grandma in your house, please come to the altar tonight. we got to get that fixed quick. That's not Grandma. That's not Grandma comforting you and telling you, I love you and I'm fine and the dog's fine, all the stuff that come up with. No, that's not happening. It's all sham. It's all fake. And if you let that into your life and you receive it, that gives the demons legal rights to pursue you and invade you and your family. Do not get involved in that. He has a mantle. So now Saul, is he perceives it's Samuel. So he does the one thing that costs him his life. He bows to a familiar spirit, the king of Israel, Bowed to a familiar spirit. That was the end. That's the worst thing you can do. And it says uh, later on in Chronicles chapter 10, the reason that Saul died was for his transgressions and for consulting a familiar spirit. Not good. All right, let's take a quick look at the kingdom of darkness and see how these things fit in. We wrestle not against flesh and blood. That's the Greek word. Pale, it means to literally wrestle. It was a term used uh, in the Roman Olympics for wrestlers. And uh, we do not, us as born-again Christians, Ephesians 6, we do not wrestle against flesh and blood like an Olympic wrestler would. We fight against spiritual warriors. This is a spiritual battle. These are spiritual warriors. And you are a human being, but also a spirit being, and your weapons are not carnal, but they're mighty to God. You fight the spiritually. You do not physically fight with people. And that's difficult to control sometimes because you meet somebody at church with a big mouth and they have an urge to administer a Holy Spirit slap. Yeah. 
You'd like to beat them up. You'd like to run over them in the parking lot. But you hold that back because this is a fight against the spirit world, not against other human beings. We're not fighting the government. The government's controlled by familiar spirits. We're not fighting the state. The state's being controlled by Satan. This is a spiritual battle at every level, from childhood to death. We fight against Archon, spiritual rulers. We fight against Exousia, spiritual authorities. We fight against uh, spiritual rulers. Cosmocrator. That is uh, the demons we're talking about tonight. Those are the ones that get into a person's body and then you can hear them. Sometimes they'll talk to you. They'll talk at you. That happened to me this week. I was doing some deliverance work with a, a lady on uh, Skype and uh, she would go through deliverance for a few minutes and then the demons would say, I'm fine. I'm fine. And I go, I know she's not fine. You're lying. Come on out. Then he would scream, ah, you know, they pitch a big fit. Then a couple minutes later, I'm done. I'm done. <laughs> uh, that's not her. That's you. She's not done. Come on out. Ah, he screams again. And then it would turn into a dog and pony show. But those are the ones that take over the person's mind and they're talking out of their mouths. See? A witch. A witch voluntarily allows the spirit to channel through them. They do it voluntarily, and they develop skills for that. The people we see here that have are infected with demons, they don't, they don't voluntarily do that knowingly. They, they unknowingly are cooperating, and so we have to break that process. Because if we don't break it, the demons won't come out. You can't let spirits speak through you. Yeah, they have to come out. <laughs> the only way to get them out is repentance. You got to repent of your sin. All deliverance revolves around repentance. Amen. Amen. And that's why deliverance sucks. Because uh, people want deliverance light. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So they'll go to bondage breakers and cleansing stream and different things. And there's a lot of good things in those programs, and they teach a lot of good things. Absolutely. I've, I've read the programs, and they're, they're all good. But they all fail at the end of the process when you're trying to actually get the spirit out of the person. That's where they clunk. That's, that's what they can't do. They've got good prep for it, but then they don't show you how to get, actually get the spirit out of the person. Deliverance requires... All of that plus that. You have to repent of your sin. If you don't repent of your sin, you spend all your time rebuking uh, generational curses and word curses and uh, principalities flying over your house. That's good, but we're not going to be able to get the demons out of you. You can rebuke the curses and the generational things. That's good. Okay, that's part of the process, but not good enough. Not going to work in actually getting the spirit out of you. You changing how you think, you repenting of your sin, you apologizing, you stop listening to demons, you change your life, that crushes their power. That kills them. That they can't stand. If you keep feeding them, you can rebuke generational curses from here till doomsday. You're not getting delivered. This isn't going over very well. Let's go back to the scripture. <clears throat> These spirits, the rulers, the controllers in the person are the ones you're trying to get out. So many times during deliverance, you'll get dozens or hundreds out first before you get to the controller. This one. They are the rulers of this age. And now we come into the familiar spirit realm Spiritual wickedness in high places, okay? Those are extremely perverted spirits, is what it says, in the atmosphere. And this would be the atmosphere here underneath the ozone. You know, it's about 70 or 80 miles here. 
that's what that word is talking about, Eperonius, the atmosphere. Not heaven where God is. Spirits move through the atmosphere. I walk through the atmosphere. I'm walking through it. It starts there and it goes up. Right? But I have to walk through it because I can't fly. They can fly, so to speak. I don't know how they do it, but they, trans they travel through the spirit world in a supernatural fashion. Angels, demons, whatever. They all transfer, travel through the atmosphere. That's what that verse is saying. How'd that go? <clears throat> you bored yet? <laughs> okay. This will get interesting in a minute. Let's go to false prophets. These are all familiar spirits. They breed false prophets like you dog breeders breed puppies. Jeremiah 14. The Lord said, the prophets prophesy lies in my name. I did not send them. I didn't speak to them. They prophesy fake visions and divinations. They prophesy things of nothing. Nothing. Out of the deceit of their heart. Ezekiel 13 says, The word of the Lord came to me, Son of man, prophesy against the prophets of Israel. Say to them that prophesy out of their own hearts. You see, the difference here is clear, is it? A true prophet, a true man or woman of God, prophesies out of their spirit man where the Holy Spirit resides. And you get the information from the Holy Ghost, and then you share it accordingly. False prophets don't do that. They, it comes out of their own inner man, their soul, their mind, and then they prophesy something they think fits. Or they make stuff up. Hear the word of the Lord. Woe to foolish prophets that follow their own spirit and don't see anything. Meaning, don't see anything from God. This is very common in the prophetic and charismatic movements now. They get up and they prophesy, and it sounds like some general prophecy that apply to 50 different people. They're really prophesying about nothing. It's just nothing. It's just a word of encouragement. All it is is a word of encouragement. Anybody can do that. You can do it. You can do it. It's not a prophecy. God knows you've been going through heartaches and sorrows. He knows you've been beaten down. The Lord told me that God is going to come. What are you talking about? That's not a real prophecy. That's just babbling, nincompooperish, poppycock. That's a yes, Hebrew. And it, it could apply to anybody. You know, a real prophet prophesies specific stuff from God, and he speaks directly to the need, and it's always 100% accurate. All these prophetic and charismatic prophets, you know, they call themselves prophets. That's the first red flag. They're not one. This thing even on. If you have to tell somebody you're a prophet, that's a red flag. You're not really a prophet. See, if you're a prophet, your gift makes room for you. People know, hey, this person has this and that and that gift. They don't go around telling them, I'm a, here's my card. I'm the apostle. I'm the apostle. You're apostle, are you? Why don't you apostle out of here? Okay, don't get involved with prophets and apostles. It's all spiritual poppycock. It's all crap. Don't get sucked. Don't do it, I'm warning you. You're going to be very unhappy. You'll be led astray and you're going to be heartbroken and disappointed when they give you these false words and Speaking out this, God told me this, to tell you, brother, that, uh, uh, dude, tell somebody else. Just point to somebody else. You can get away with it. The prophet comes up, God told me to tell, tell him. And then run for the bathroom. <laughs> Do it. Divination spirits, here we go. These are really interesting. They're all over the United States and all over TV. These are really interesting, familiar spirits. We went to a prayer. Paul said, and a Pedaski uh, showed up. That's a young female slave. She was echo in the grip of a familiar spirit. She's a grip 
of a spirit of divination. Huthon is the Greek word. It's translated as python in English. Okay? And I've noticed these spirits with uh, mediums and channelers and all that kind of stuff. They get into your spine and they seem to be in the sacrum and the lower back and they seem to be in the upper back and different things. It's really weird. I don't know why that is, to be honest with you. Sometimes they're in the hip area down here. Strange. But that's where they seem to come out of when they're being cast out. And sometimes they're uh, very demonstrative. The person does a lot of physical shaking and bouncing around. And sometimes they're loud. They get fussy. And they'll yell at you or howl or something like that. Demonstrative, I should say. It says, she brought her master's much gain by soothsaying, that's the Greek word mantuomai, means to be a fortune teller. She's making money by giving people fortunes, telling them fortunes. Some of them are true, some of them are false. She followed Paul and cried, these men are the servants of the Most High God. They show us the way of salvation. Now here, great tip on familiar spirits. They impersonate the Holy Ghost. What they do is they infiltrate churches and they prophesy good things, spiritual things. They quote Bible verses. Okay? They try to imitate what they see the Holy Spirit do. They know what he does, so they try to imitate it. They're imposters. She's trying to attach herself to Paul because the demons know Paul's the real deal. So the demons go, hey, we got to came up with Paul, and if we get in this church, and we're part of this church, we'll be accepted like people would accept <laughs> real Christians or real ministers. It's all, it's all a con game. It's a, it's, it's a trick. It's a trick. Paul's great, the demon said. Oh, they're showing us wit. See, the demons are speaking out truth, truthful things, facts, things that are factual. See, familiar spirits are too smart to lie all the time. They're too smart for that. You can't lie all the time and fool Christians. You got to mingle in with them and fake them out. That's how you beat them. You fake them out. Trick them. They show us the way of salvation. That's what they're doing. That's true. These are some of the activities of familiar spirits. You'll have uh, wake up in the middle of the night and feel something in your room or something sitting on your chest or something heavy or uh, your shadow figure and sitting in the corner of your room. Uh, you'll see wake up in the middle of the night and somebody's choking you or you're paralyzed and can't move. You got sleep paralysis. These demons give messages to people while they're sleeping. A lot of times they're good messages. They also cause nightmares. They cause people <coughs> to be uh, petrified and afraid. They give people religious dreams. They, they give them dreams and tell them to do stuff, you know. And then they tell them to go find somebody to interpret that dream. And they send them an interpreter. And then the interpreter interprets it. And pretty soon the person just <coughs> right down the toilet. It's just terrible. <clears throat> Sometimes they fabricate stuff. They love interpreting dreams. I've seen a couple of ministers. I've met a couple that have a gifting of the gift of dream interpretation. <laughs> wow. The gift of dream interpretation. Please, don't go there. Don't go get your dream interpreted. Call me, I'll interpret it for you. Hello? What happened? Did you eat Mexican food last night? <laughs> you got gas? I'll break it down with a little bit of reality there for you. The dream interpreter will say, oh, this, this usually symbolizes that, and this usually symbolizes that. Don't, don't get sucked on that. Don't do that. Don't do that. Familiar spirits are geniuses, and they're anatomy experts. Now, if you take a look at your brain, here's where they hide. They get into your brain, and they play your brain like an orchestra, okay? 
So the frontal lobe here is where you make all your decisions. Here's your executive functions right there, right? Then you got your hearing part of the brain. You got your speech centers here. You got your vision center back there, right? In the middle of your brain here, you've got <coughs> moving your legs or using the center. So these demons float around in the brain there, manipulating the person's body. They can cause diseases using the center of the brain and then weird paralysis and fibromyalgia and arthritis starts popping into somebody's body. They attack the frontal lobe here and they put words from God into the person's mind so that they can share it with other people. They hide in the brain giving messages to people. They might attack the vision section of the brain there and you might have a vision from these familiar spirits. They're really good at visions. <coughs> Very talented. Other demons can't do that. Satan gave Jesus a vision. Pow! Greatest vision anybody's ever had. He showed him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. Wow, now that's real skill. They have those skills. And you have to have discernment and you have to get two or three witnesses to confirm every word given. And if you don't get two or three witnesses, you don't accept that word is from God. That's what the Bible says. It says it in six places. In the mouth of two or three witnesses. So if you get a dream and you say, and you go to a dream interpreter and they say, well, that means this and that means that. And you accept it. Dude, you're screwed. You disobeyed the word of God. You opened yourself up to the world of familiar spirits. Deception. Disease. Stupidity. Failure. They've got it all. Rolling. That's how they roll. You get a word from God, and you've got to have two or three confirmations from God on that word. Or you don't accept it. Hello? Amen. I got a vision. Oh my. Well, wait a minute. Whoa. Beep. You may have gotten a vision from God. I'm not knocking you. But it has to be confirmed. You don't just accept vision. I'm showing you how to not get tricked, folks. The devil's smarter than we are. We got to use our discernment. We got to use our. Renewed minds in Christ. Familiar spirits hide in the brain. The Holy Spirit is in the spirit man. The familiar spirits try to imitate him. Okay? So he gives the person their prayer language. They speak in tongues. Well, they try to give them a language too. You know? I've met dozens of people who have demonic tongues. I've met dozens of people who have blocked Solid Holy Spirit tongues, but it's blocked. Okay, it's all caused by spirits in your brain. They can do these things. Okay, so. Is the word from the Holy Spirit, or is the word the person's giving you from a familiar spirit? Once you've had familiar spirits, it's really hard to tell the difference. And in many cases, it's, it's almost impossible. And be very careful. These familiar, familiar spirits use the person. You see these people on TV, channelers, seance, necromancers. They're on TV. they got reality shows. They're all going to end up dying with weird diseases. As far as I can tell, almost everybody that's come to me with these demons... Later on in their mid 40s and their 40s and 50s, their bodies are falling apart. They got all kinds of weird illnesses, organ problems, joint problems, everything. These demons torture witches down the stretch. They die old and ugly. They'll give you temporarily benefits, but then you gotta pay them back. You gotta pay them back with your life. You gotta die in pain. You gotta die ugly. That's the price for a familiar spirit. That's what they charge. I've seen it, I don't know, dozens of times in my office. Dozens of times. 
These are common illnesses that I have noticed These aren't all of them of course you may have uh, more knowledge about some other ones But I've seen these caused by familiar spirits pretty pretty regularly They're they're they are joint attackers uh, They give strange electrical electrical experiences in the body, you know Brother Mike, I some guy prayed for me and I felt electricity go through me. <gasps> oh boy. I just I lay an egg right there. Boom. <laughs> the guy thought that was God. Okay. Yeah. Jeez, nuts. <clears throat> Brother Mike, I felt like I was electrocuted. That's probably what they're gonna do to you later. They're electric. -y. Here's some other uh, familiar spirits. These are their handiwork, craftsmanship, uh, Mormonism. Uh, we got this building here from the Mormons. The uh, Holy Ghost moved them out, moved us in. Their familiar spirits are spiritual religious geniuses because if you look at Mormonism, it's a very complex and very vast religion. They made all that stuff up. Joseph Smith saw Visions of familiar spirits impersonating Jesus <coughs> Jehovah in the woods remember yeah. anybody know anything about Mormonism? Yeah. Uh, uh, Muhammad saw an angel in the cave familiar spirit impersonating the angel in the cave yeah? These demons are incredibly intelligent uh, Scientology mm. is a very complex satanic cult they got all kinds of doctrines and teachings. They they made all this stuff up. You got to be a, a divine supernatural or something kind of genius to make up all those things that that psycho did that started Scientology. You can't be just a regular person. Hinduism is a vast religion, extremely complicated, extremely deep. They made all that up. Okay, these aren't two pages of stuff. This is generations of stuff they make up. They're incredibly intelligent. And got to have the Holy Ghost to face these things. Or, or we're all doomed without him. Doomed, period. We're out of our league. I mean, we're playing tiddlywinks. They're playing NFL football. I mean, it's just no contest between us and them. We got to have the Holy Ghost. Martial arts, Tai Chi, all that stuff is is them. Uh, Mystic, Scientology, everything. Shamans, New Age, the New Age movement is 100% familiar spirits. Native American witchcraft, all that's familiar spirits. Kundalini spirits in the charismatic and prophetic movement, given all these strange fire miracles, those are all familiar spirits. Now they got Bibles that drip oil. Really handy to have around when you're lubing your car. <laughs> then they got, they used to have angel feathers and gold dust. People got tired of that, so the familiar spirits stopped that. They'll always give you something new if you get bored with their old stuff. It's all a con game. All this stuff. Christian legalism is from familiar spirits. Familiar spirits love Christianity. They've invaded it, and they control it. They control Christianity and they broke it down from one unit in Acts to multiple units now. You got Methodists, Episcopals, Lutherans, it goes on and on. Okay? You got Pentecostals. No, you got different kinds of Pentecostals. United Pentecostal, Assemblies of God, Pentecostal Holiness. <laughs> There's like 18 different Pentecostal groups. They all got different doctrines. Familiar spirits even control baptisms. They get you to fight over it. No, you're baptizing Jesus only. Well, I got baptized in the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Well, let's have a fight. This is all familiar spirits. All of it. You don't get it, do you? They're outsmarting us. They're smarter than we are. Okay? We're playing checkers, they're playing chess. Did you get baptized in Jesus only? Said, Hold on a minute. Goodbye. <laughs> Stupid. 
fighting over baptism totally familiar spirit. You're gonna be a spiritual moron to fight over baptism. Moron. Then they break it down. Oh yeah. Familiar spirits are like rap rap singers. They'll break it down for you. Well, we got baptized by sprinkling. <laughs> well, I got hosed off when I got baptized. Oh, I got dunked when I big fight over it. Only familiar spirits would get Christians to fight over water and how you got watered. <laughs> Are you, that's genius. That's a genius. Fight over that. They weren't baptized right. Jeez. Oh, that's a sin. Huh. They do that with everything, every every legalism, every doctrine of legalism. We honor God because we all wear ties. I bought that years ago. I wore a tie all the time to church. I thought I was, I thought I was spiritually deep. Imagine that, God Almighty! I mean, they'll fight over anything, anything at all. I mean, you name it, they'll start a fight over. Any religious thing, start to fight over. Clothes. They're real hard on women. Oh, they're on. They're all over women. If you're a Muslim and you're a woman, dude, you're in trouble, honey. You got all kinds of restrictions on you that men don't have. All kinds. You in a Pentecostal holiness outfit? You ever been around them? Okay, we went. You ever been around Amish people? Wow, wearing a cooped out outfit, Santa beard. None of this stuff has any spiritual value to the Holy Ghost. These are familiar spirits. Doesn't matter whether you have a beard or not. That guy's got a beard. Look at him. Look at him. She doesn't have one. You think he's more spiritual than her? Because she doesn't have a beard? Stupid. Come on. Stop it. Love covers them up. This is all from they want they want us to fight. Right, Mike? They want us to fight over stuff. Okay. Right? Now, if that guy there walked into a, some churches with a Levi t shirt on, he'd get tar and feathered. <laughs> that guy right there. That guy's a huge sinner right there. I know that guy. He's a heavily sinner. He's a rapist and a killer. Look at that shirt. You can tell he is because he's wearing a Levi shirt. Come on, folks. What you're wearing, this is not... It's your heart to God. He looks on... Man looks on the outward appearance. God looks on the heart. Familiar spirits look at what you're wearing. They want to know what you're doing. All right. This is all familiar spirits speaking to the dead the demons impersonate the relative because the demons that follow the relative around during their lifetime know more about that person than the relatives know about them because they were there for the intimate moments of the person's life so they can impersonate that dead person and you, you go oh my god only Bob would know that see they know that when other people don't know that they have information you don't have. Because they followed the person around for 10, 20, 50, 60, 80 years. So they know all about that person. You don't know all about that person. And then they give you comforting words. See, that's the trick. They don't tell you nasty lies. They don't tell you the facts. Bob's in hell. He's burning and screaming. No, they're not going to tell you that. They're going to say, hey, Bob and Fido are at the park. They're having a good time. And they're getting baptized. But they'll make up something fun, comforting, good. They use good things on Christians. And it sucks them right in. They fall for it instantaneously. You can't do that. You cannot talk to dead people. This guy channeling, this guy here, uh, this kid here, uh, Tyler, he's got tremendous demonic power. He really can channel in spirits. And he tells people stuff that they can't believe. It's amazing. They've even take, taken him into a lab and tested his brain. They don't know how he does it. I know how he does it. It's familiar spirits. They're, they're smarter than all these people put together. 
They do TV shows all the time medium. These are all familiar spirits doing the TV shows For those of you who are old like me, uh, you know who these people are, but If you're young you never heard of them, but they actually started spiritualism in America These two people were the main ones that started it Back in the 60s 70s they were big <clears throat> This guy here was loaded with familiar spirits uh, the Moonies, you ever heard of them? They're still around. He's dead. I think the Dalai Lama is still alive. That's all familiar spirits. Uh, and again, the Dalai Lama, the demons tell him, hey, look, here, you can move to a higher level of consciousness. Tell the people they got to be good to each other. Uh, love, you know, love helps mankind. You got to be kind to people. You got to stop fighting and uh, no more wars. Oh, well, all that stuff sounds great. That's why they do it because it sounds great. They're they're tricking you. They're tricking you. Okay. Uh, Miranda in Florida, he's dead. He said he was Jesus. Then he later changed it. He's the Antichrist. Then he later changed it to a cancer victim uh, and died in the hospital. There's Michael Trevesser. He's terminally ill. They finally let him out of jail in New Mexico. He was in jail for. Uh, Molesting that girl there uh, Let's see the, he was an end-of-the-world cult in New Mexico Remember that you don't remember him, but anyway They went up on a mountain in New Mexico somewhere and waiting for the second coming or the end of the world or something It never happened then he got Prosecuted these two guys are dead. They had a uh, pretty big cults uh, Both of them claim to be prophets of God These two guys here are dead uh, Apple White had the hail bop comet guy that came out remember that in the 90s They all were going up to the hail bop Comet to get out of here, you know, I sympathize with them. I mean I get in the mood where I want to get out of here But uh, getting up to a hail bop comet's not gonna work for me The wacky Wacos remember him that guy had tremendous demonic power uh, Mind control this guy. I think is still alive Jeff's He's the Mormon fundamentalist. He was a child molester. He, I think he's still in prison. I'm not sure though. Uh, this guy here I know is around, the Jew hater Farrakhan. He hates Jews. <clears throat> and uh, when he first started his ministry, he taught people he was Allah incarnate until the Middle Eastern Muslims got word of it. And when they got on him about it, he pulled back obviously there the Middle Eastern Muslims weren't about to go for that But he's still around teaching false doctrines all this is familiar spirits Buddhism uh, Buddha is not actually a god so to speak, but he teaches godly things. That's all familiar spirits a lot of the stuff He teaches is good Wicca is a earth-based familiar spirit cult Kind of like witches in a way Hinduism mentioned earlier there's thousands of gods in Hinduism. They're all familiar spirit gods. All of them are fake Kachina used to be a god of the Native Americans and they made Kachina dolls out of her uh, All that stuff is witchcraft all that's familiar spirits If you have any Indian stuff in your home, I'd get it out of there You got Buddha dolls laying around. I get those out of there. Those things are drawing in demons almost like waving a flag at somebody Get stuff out of your home go through your home and make sure there's nothing in there That a familiar spirit would be interested in I would remove it if I was you You know why not play it safe? Islam is is the going to be the main religion uh, During the Armageddon and the tribulation. They're going to continue to grow huge. They're growing fast here in the United States uh, Muslims are invading our country and Americans uh, have uh, like one or two kids per family and um, Muslims have six to eight kids per family So in one generation you can just take over a whole town practically Because they breed like rabbits. So for example Dearborn, Michigan completely taken over by Islam the mayor the police everything. They're all Muslims now several cities in Texas have totally taken over by uh, Islam 
and their long-term goal is to initiate Sharia law. Why is that? Because religion always favors men. Men always want to dominate in religion. And Sharia law is the ultimate religious law for men to dominate women. They control them. They control what they wear. They control how they behave. Uh, for example, in Saudi Arabia, uh, women just now, after centuries, got the right to drive a car. They like to keep their women in one spot. You know, if you get in a car, you can move to different spots. They don't like that. Got to keep them there. Here in America, it's quite the opposite. You go out here, and women will run you right over. Out here on any school, no problem at all. And women in cars everywhere, you're dodging. Here's the biggest familiar spirit in the planet Earth, Mother Mary. This thing is a monster, a monstrous killer. Mother Mary is not Jesus' mother. mother Jesus' mother was a beautiful woman of God, faithful, loving, a great mother, great <coughs> servant of the Lord. Her real name was uh, Maria in some texts in Greek. This is not mother. This is not Jesus' mother. This is Mother Mary. This is somebody else. This is a familiar spirit that second to none. This is the big gun. She is a marauder. Messianic Judaism is getting run over by familiar spirits. They're starting to pro proselytize <laughs> Gentiles, Christians. Hey, you got to take a feast. What about it? Special day, what about this, what about that? It's all familiar spirits. There are no feasts. There's no new moons. There's no, none of that stuff. None of it. There's no circumcisions. Nothing. Unfortunately, I got all the Messianic Jews here tonight. This isn't going to go well. Well, they had a big dispute over it in Acts. And people uh, far more anointed than we are took a look at it and came up with this. Acts 15. Our sentence is this, that we do not trouble the Gentiles from among uh, the nations that are turned to God. And we write to them that they abstain from certain things. What? Abstain from what? Well, there were only four things in that, in that little epistle they sent around. Four things, that was it. Four things, that was it. Do not, you don't need to keep this feast, this, this holiday, this new moon, this and that, that and this. See, it's all, and once again, the demons, familiar spirits, love legalism. Because legalism is control. They want to control you. Familiar spirits are control freaks. They want to dominate you. See? Now, if you want to do that, let's say you want to have a feast. Well, go ahead. You know, don't overeat, but have a good time at your feast. But that's not something God requires from you to improve your holiness or improve your position in Christ. So your position with God is in Christ, not a new moon or a holiday or a feast or a holy day or this or that or that or this. That will have nothing to do with nothing. But if you want to do it, hey, I'm not going to yell at you, criticize you. That's your business. Well, I like to have, I like, I like to celebrate Passover. Knock yourself out. As long as you understand that's not a requirement from God for you to eat Passover. I better go on here. Oops. Let's switch subjects. Let's go to America. Wow, America is something, isn't it? <clears throat> By the way, in part two of this next month, I'll have all kinds of videos to show you exactly how these spirits control people and how they manifest in part two, which is our November <coughs> seminar. I'll show you exactly what they do with all the videos, okay? <clears throat> Witchcraft and New Age is their specialty, and here, here they are. They invented this stuff. The guy that invented... The Ouija board, over 100 years ago, he was on his roof trying to patch it and slipped and fell off and died. 
And I think he had a premonition of it because he had goodbye on his board there. <laughs> so the demon said, thanks for the board and pushed him off the roof. Tea leaves. You shake them. Oh, oh, let me read those for you. Ooh, stupid. Now you can drink tea. That's not a sin. But reading the tea leaves, that's familiar spirits. Have you ever been to a seance? Believe it or not, several Christians have been to seances and have gone to psyches. I've, I've interviewed several dozen Christians over the years who said they went to a psychic to get information. Now that's really true. It happens a lot. Uh, Native American ceremonies, those are all familiar spirit. Sweat lodges. Indian jewelry. Familiar spirits. All that jewelry that's processed is blessed before it's sold. Yeah. Rosary. Each one of these beads in the rosary has a spiritual significance. Uh, most of the ones are Hail Mary beads. Okay, and then they have the other ones have other significance. Uh, again, that's all familiar spirits. They're made up of something to wear beads. They like beads, apparently. Uh, here's a Where's that at? California. Mormon. There's a Buddha temple. Familiar spirits like fancy buildings. They love them. They don't like home churches. They like fancy. Beautiful. They love stained glass windows. They love them. They like the way the light shines through it. They like nice carpets. Beautiful chairs. They love them. They're edifices. Here in Tempe, we've got them. Here's a Krishna temple over in Tempe, in case you want to go over there. Here's a mo mosque. We have several mosques in Maricopa County. Now, there's one. There's a big one in Phoenix there near the freeway. Here's a Hindu tape, uh, a temple in uh, Phoenix. Uh, the, <coughs> these familiar spirits like props. They love props. They try to get people to focus on a prop. Instead of the Savior. So they get a rug. This is an anointed rug. This is an anointed spray bottle. It's got holy oil in it. Holy oil. There you go. Everybody in this section is now holy. Everybody in this section, heathens. I'll get to you. All this stuff, is, familiar spirits love props. You get a prop going. That's a red flag. Something wrong. <clears throat> Here's in Maricopa, Arizona. What do they got down there? A Hindu temple now. Yeah. Party on down there. <coughs> These are all familiar spirits. Here's extremely dangerous ones. For some reason, my experience with masonry spirits is very bad. I've noticed that in every, almost every case of schizophrenia, Autism, developmental disability, and some others. Up the family tree, there is masonry up there, or witchcraft of some kind. And these masonry spirits, in my experience over the years, they're tough to get out. They're very stubborn, very smart. They're extremely dangerous, and they cause lots of terrible sicknesses. Here's a bunch of Shriners heading to a big meeting. Those are little cars that were sprayed with holy water. They run great. And the hat brings in the holiness. Got your tassel there. Again, once again, this is all demons. Nobody needs to have a little cart to ride around in. And you don't need a hat. Hello. <clears throat> Familiar spirits are prolific authors. They've written hundreds of millions of books over the years. Here's a couple of them, inspired by demons. They love holy books. They're very good at holy books. All religions they invent, they always invent a holy book that goes with it. Okay? Really smart. Why? Again, familiar spirits copy the Holy Ghost. The Holy Spirit gave us the divinely inspired scriptures. So they copy him and they give these cults divinely inspired <coughs> supposed scriptures. 
right? There's a New World Translation. That, there's so many uh, fabricated verses in that thing, it's unbelievable. If you've ever read it. <clears throat> there's the Talmud, the Jewish Talmud. That's written by familiar spirits. They took the Word of God and then they retranslated it and they made it available for modern man. And of course, it was all human knowledge that went into it. It wasn't divinely inspired. There's the Quran. Obviously, that's familiar spirits. The Apocrypha is in a lot of Bibles. That's just a bunch of familiar spirit fairy tales. One of them uh, has Jesus getting mad at a kid and turns him into a, a what? Turn him into a bird or something? All of that stuff's cooked up by them. It was thrown out of our Bible when they put our text together. Catechism is a familiar spirit course you take to learn how to do spiritual things. They love movies. Movies are very powerful with familiar spirits. <coughs> Particularly this time of year. This is Satan's favorite holiday. It's Halloween. And every year the country sinks another step lower. Halloween, Halloween, Halloween. You can see the country deteriorating from the 60s till now. Every Halloween it drops down another level of immorality, a lover, another level of spiritualism. You can see it. It just keeps dropping. And Halloween is the target point. Bang, bang, it goes down. Halloween, a very dangerous uh, celebration. In America, it's the number two holiday. Next to... Christmas, right? Number two now behind Christmas in revenue. Uh, here's two familiar spirit movies. The only two, uh, these are the only two horror movies that ever got on the blockbuster list. All the other ones are kind of second rate movies. These were the only two, and they were this Exorcist movie that came out in the 70s. I believe it came out the year 73, I believe. People were vomiting in the theater and passing out and running out and it was it caused a trauma all through the United States. This it movie scared people half to death. All right, how are we doing so far? <clears throat> Anybody angry at me? <laughs> Thank you for your mercy applause. We'll take a couple of questions right now. Uh, did you give that mic to Connie? Does Connie have the mic? Anybody have a question or any comment you'd like to make? And then we'll take a couple seconds, then we'll move on. Anybody on right on the right side? Anybody? Yes. I was gonna. Am I on? I was gonna say seducing spirits and unclean seducing spirits cause mental illness, right? Well, the, the principally seducing spirits cause mental illness. Yeah, but familiar spirits can also cause them. And unclean spirits cause, like, for infirmities and stuff like that? Yeah, unclean spirits usually cause sicknesses and illnesses. They're usually the demons that attack your body with uh, lust, anger, that kind of thing. Those are usually unclean spirits. And familiar can cause both, though? Or? Familiar, familiar can cause everything. They're, they're at the top of the food chain. They're extremely dangerous. But mainly it's religion. That's their main thing they love is religion. Uh, the familiar spirits, is that because they're familiar with you? Is that why they call them that? No. No? Okay. Explain now, the Hebrew that. word is obey, and it means to prat or chatter. It was the demons that uh, the channelers used, like the witch of Endor, and that was the term used to describe them chatting or pratting out words from the spirit world. That's what the Hebrew word means, obey. Yes. Is there a particular spirit that that um, affects animals um, or birds or things like that? Is there a familiar spirit? Sure. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you can have the animals can be possessed. That happens a lot. That happens a lot. Mostly in junkyard dogs. They are. Pit bulls are bred. They're possessed. They're bred to kill. I'll tell you a story, short one, if you want to hear it. A lady came to see me one time. She brought a, 
her friend with her. And uh, they were from out of town, up in northern Arizona. They came down for deliverance. Well, uh, I took the one lady in for deliverance. And while she was getting delivered, right in the middle of her deliverance, this other lady was sitting in the chair watching it. And uh, she started to go like this. Ooh, 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 like that. And I took a look at it and kind of jumped back. I thought, that's weird. <laughs> this was several years ago. I'd never run into animal spirits before. <clears throat> the first time I'd ever seen it. So then I switched over to that lady for deliverance. For obvious reasons. No, that's not going to fly at Walmart. <laughs> Actually, it would. Uh, but anyway, after her deliverance, and both of them were delivered, afterwards I asked her, and come to find out she was an a, a avid, addicted bird watcher. She loved birds. And God showed me that the Bible says, do not turn your, put your affections on things below, but put your affections on things above where Christ sits at the right hand of God. And if you love animals too much, you can pick up spirits. It's okay to love an animal, but if you go overboard like that lady did, she had picked up these strange bird spirits. And, I, and then she looked like a hawk. You know how a hawk would kind of do that? It was really weird. It was like her. these were feathers, and she was jerking them back and going forward with her neck. You know, it was, it's, I'd never seen it before. That was the first time I was ever exposed to animal spirits. But she was acting, act like, acting like a bird, predatory bird. Were you able to get that out of her? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and then I told her, hey, you've got to put this bird watching thing, you know, like the Bible says, moderation in all things. Okay? So you're not supposed to love a dog or a cat more than a human being. And the problem is it's so easy to do because uh, dogs in particular give unconditional love. Unconditional love. And humans don't. Humans give conditional love. So it's easy to gravitate to a dog. But you got to be careful with your affections. Yeah. So this might be covered in, your, in part two of this, but I was wondering, can you touch on Mardi Gras a little bit? Get in touch on what? What do you say? Mardi Gras. Holy smoke. That's a familiar spirit. Uh, convention. That's so dangerous. Voodoo is a main feature of familiar spirits. They're the demons behind voodoo. Witchcraft. Yeah. Mardi Gras. Very dangerous period of the year. Yeah. Would a good definition, and this has always been my definition, of familiar spirits be Spirits of religious error? Sure. Yeah, that's their main main attack is religion. And they spread false doctrines like you can't believe. You see it on TV all the time. There, somebody on TV is always coming up with a new doctrine. Well, right there, that's a red flag. That's probably a familiar spirit. Really? Christianity has been around 2,000 years and you've got a new doctrine? Some, there's something new under the sun? You know, just a red flag there. Hey, you know. But Brother Mike, I was studying the courts of heaven. Dude, they made that one up too. Going to the courts of heaven. Come on, stop. Stay right here and pray. Yeah. Okay. That's the end of the question then. Yeah, I, I work with a Jehovah Witness gentleman, and he's, uh, you know, he's a tremendous worker. He's a nice guy. Uh, he's, uh, he, he, he's just the customers love him. The boss loves him. And, uh, you know, we had a, a company get together, and I kind of challenged him, and he got extremely defensive and, aggr <laughs> and aggressive. And uh, it really kind of blew my mind. But, uh, can you just talk a little bit more about Jehovah Witness? And uh, because these folks, I know it's the um, uh, New World Translation, but they really know that Bible inside and out. 
And uh, if you try to challenge them, I mean, they got an answer for everything you say. Mm -hmm. And uh, and uh, I would like a little bit more information on how to talk to this gentleman and uh, and let him know that I love him. But, uh, I mean, the guy is just so aggressive and so defensive. And uh, it's really kind of unnerving for me. Yeah, no, we don't have time to go into the Jehovah's Witnesses, but... What, he said something's very important, though. He said he's a really nice guy and a hard worker. That's true of all of these religions. Mormons, I, I know a bunch of Mormons. They're really nice people. They're hard workers. I mean, the, the familiar spirits, they always come at you with something good or nice. You know, they're not like witchcraft in their witchcraft mode where everything's bizarre. Okay, their real skills are subtly seeping into the church, like the Jehovah Witnesses. They knock on your door. They're nice people. Hey, they're wearing a tie, so they've got to be from God. Not like this heathen. Look at him. <laughs> so right out of the gate. See, they use nice things to fool you. Okay? Nice things to fool you. Yeah, the, the, there's a lot of things in that New World Translation that's just completely bogus trans, translation. For example, John... John chapter 1 it says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Well, the Jehovah Witnesses stuck an article in there. It says in their Bible, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was a God. And there isn't a Greek manuscript anywhere on the planet that has an article in there, A. None of them have it. They just stuck it in there. Why? Because they wanted to diminish the divinity of Christ. They don't want any divine recognition of Jesus as God. So they stuck an A in there. Stuff like that. It's all through the text. Okay, but we don't have time to go through that tonight. Sir. Sorry. So you, you mentioned people with autism, and you mentioned if you start looking at their history there, you see some masonry. You said a lot. I'm curious, what is a lot? Is a lot 40% or 90%? 90%. I'm putting you on the, on the spot. 90%. A lot. Okay, yeah. interesting. Most. Interesting. Most schizophrenia, particularly, you see, you'll see masonry or witchcraft up in their family tree. There, in almost every case, filters down, bang, it gets hit. I just have a quick question. So, if if you had a familiar spirit from like New Age stuff that you had meddled in, and then you do catch or you do get diseased. Um, but you go through deliverance and healing, do those spirits continue to attack you with symptoms? No. No, once you get healed, you don't have the symptoms anymore. So if you're still having symptoms, but they've been reduced, there's probably more than one spirit in there. So let's say there were four in there and you got three out. You're still going to have some <laughs> symptoms here. Once they're all gone, you're, you recover. person recovers. Hi, um, I have a question. Um, you said that um, in order to prove that a prophet is, in order to prove that a prophet is real, you get two or three confirmation. How long does it take to receive the, the two or three confirmation? Does it take weeks, days, months, years? Well, now that's between you and God, and what's going on with your life. There's no, there's no way to, uh, there, there isn't any way to tell the Lord how to do His business. Okay, so just for example. Uh, I had a lady come to me one time who was a prophet. And she gave me a prophetic word in my office over at the House of Healing. This was several years ago. And uh, I said, okay, well, thank you for coming in. I gave her a hug and kiss and sent her on her way. I told the Lord, I said, uh, now that prophecy sounds legitimate, but I said, I'm not going to receive it until I get two or three confirmations. I got six, and that was over a period of two months. The first one came a week later. But that doesn't mean that's going to happen to that girl. See, what happened to me or you is not transferable. God knows what he's doing, and he'll give you the two and three in two seconds, uh, two hours, two weeks, whatever it is. That's none of my business. The Holy Ghost does his own thing. He don't check with me. I check with him. He don't check with me. 
Yes, sir. Uh, I saw uh, in a in this new Bible that they have come out with uh, called the Message, and in there uh, they are translating the our and the Our Father as in uh, uh, in earth as in is is in heaven, and in the Message Bible they are saying it as above, so below. I mean that's absolute just gibberish junk. Well, no, uh, he's made a good point there. The, the, that Bible he's talking about is not a uh, translation of the text. It's a thought translation. It's a thought translation. So uh, the King James Bible, let's say, would look at the Greek text and try to translate that into English as best they could. But the, the Bible he mentioned there, those are thought translations. There's about, I don't know, 15 of them on the market. Like the Living Bible, remember when that came out? What was that, in the 70s? It was a really popular Bible. Living Bible, ever heard of that one? That was, so you would read the text, let's say, out of another Bible, and then you would say, what is that really saying in my English now? So you would then reword it to what you think it's saying. Does that make sense? And so that's what he was saying there. The way the, the guy that translated that verse he mentioned said to himself well, what he's really saying is uh, above the set. I don't like those thought translations I don't use them I, I like the ones that like I said I got the KJ3 in there they looked at the Greek text and said hey here's what it says we don't we're not going to interpret it for you you figure it out and that's what I want to do I want to know just what it says I don't want you to sh tell me what it says if that makes sense. But those thought translations, you know, some of the verses are, are good. You know, they have good verses, and they have the one like he just said that was <laughs> his description of it was pretty good. But some of the some of the verses are very helpful. So you know, it's all a mixed bag. <coughs> you know. Yeah. So with our authority that we have in Jesus' name, just out of curiosity, like I know you can intercede. I know our authority that we have in Jesus' name and our authority in general, and, and uh, we can intercede in prayer like the guy he was talking about at work, the Jehovah's Witness. We can intercede in prayer for them behind closed doors or whatever with others to intercede for their salvation and all that. But I was just curious with our authority to bind up the spirits and cast them out, is there another... Uh, like process somebody could go through to like bind up the spirits on that type of person who's bound by those familiar spirits to get a chance to intercede better for them or even can you cast uh, cast them off of them without them knowing anything like that like well no uh, you've asked two questions there the first one's yes and then the second one's no okay uh, you can bind spirits in other people temporarily but you can't cast them out of them if the person wants to keep their demons, you can't cast them out of there okay. against their free will. Okay? But the third thing he said was accurate. You can intercede for somebody, and God will move on that person or crack them or break them or make an opening so that you can witness, help, something for them. What he said there was 100% correct. Absolutely, it works. Okay. I have it comes through. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> Um, so sir, uh, what's his name? Okay. Yes. Uh, so, like, what I've learned is that, um, like, really love, love them to Christ. Like, show them who Jesus is through your personality, your characteristics. You know, because my mom is Catholic, and I've tried to really like <laughs> scripture, scripture, scripture. But it's like, if there's no love or compassion, and seeing the demons behind them then it's really going to be just argumentative, you know. Good word there. Yes. Love covers a multitude of sins. Amen. All right, let's go to the uh, one of the hot spots for familiar spirits. <coughs> they absolutely love angels. Angels, very dangerous. There's all kinds of people on TV. There's thousands of books written on angels. It's really a problem. 
Uh, I've interviewed, uh, you know, hundreds of people over the years. Uh, many of them have seen angels. And I ask them, oops, I always ask them uh, what the angels look like. I get try and get some detail about what they saw. Okay. And uh, I've gotten many of answers like this. They're like, you don't, even, you don't, I say, what sex were they? Was it a male angel or female? And a lot of times they'll tell me, I don't know. I, I don't remember. I couldn't tell. Okay. You'll see those a lot. Those are familiar spirits. Baby angels are always familiar spirits. They like to use baby angels because they're so nice and so sweet. People like baby angels, so they're more accepting of them because they're so nice and so sweet. There are no baby angels. You see a baby angel run out the room. Female angels are very popular uh, because they bring comfort and they're good and they're nice. Uh, no, there's no female angels. Hot babe angels are even more popular among usually teenage boys. They really like those. <laughs> Buffed out angels, uh, older single women, very often receive these visions. Lonely women also frequently see a buffed out angel that comes to help them and fight for them. Uh, those are familiar spirits. Do not get involved with angels. <coughs> angels are not important. You do not read, read a book on angels. There are angels in this room tonight. Okay? I have nothing against angels. Hey, they're great. I got nothing to do with them. See? I go above the angels to the Holy Ghost. I don't jack around with angels. <clears throat> you got the Holy Ghost. You're way beyond an angel. Way beyond an angel. Not even close. So I'm not going to rummage around in the trash can with an angel when I got the Holy Ghost ready to go. But the familiar spirits, no. They don't want you focusing on Jesus or the Spirit of God. Or, nope. We've got to focus on an angel. There it is. And they've all got wings. Ooh. Some of them are 20, 30, 40, 50 feet tall. Oh, Brother Mike, I saw a 50 foot tall angel in my yard. What was he doing out there? Was he doing any landscaping? No, he just standing there. Okay, that's stop it. Stop. Well, Mike, you <coughs> this is heresy. Angels, God sends angels. I know he sends angels. Angelos is the Greek word, it means messenger. Angels are messenger boys. Hope the Spirit of the Lord tells them, hey, go do this, they go do that. See? Would to God you had that attitude in your life. The Spirit of God told you to go do that, and you go do it like an angel. I wish you were like that, don't you? Oops, no amen. See what I mean? This is a tough ministry. This is a tough ministry. It really is. You get guys wearing Levi shirts when they're supposed to wear ties because they're he's not religious. <laughs> Don't get sucked in with angels. Paul warns about it in the Bible. Drop it. You don't need to find out who your angel is. Many people have wrote a book on working with your guardian angel. Dude, stop doing that. You read that book and you start talking to your angel. He will appear there. And it's not your angel. It's an impersonator of an angel. See? Skip the angel thing. Skip it. Now, I want to uh, uh, go over this just briefly. This Greek word, alos, is important. Uh, in the uh, King James Bible, it's translated as another. Okay? But there's another Greek word translated as another, but they have different meanings. So, alos means another of a like kind or similar quality. For example, an orange and a tangelo or a tangerine are very similar fruits. They're like in the same family in a way. Okay? Uh, 
the other Greek word heteros means means different but it's also translated as another in the King James Bible which causes some confusion I, I'm, I'm saying this for a reason so a, another here would be an apple and a and an orange and a lime and so those are totally different fruits they're totally different but but an, but a an orange and a tangerine they're kind of similar right any problem with that okay good let's go to the scripture then first Corinthians uh, 11 chapter 11 I Paul's talking to the Corinthians because they were carnal Christians like American Christians American Christians are very carnal so this book is beautiful for us I fear lest by any means as a serpent beguiled Eve through subtlety so your minds that's the Greek word not it means your thoughts it should have been translated thoughts. So your thoughts should be the thero shrivel up or shrink your thoughts from the simplicity of Christ. See? Religion and these familiar spirits always like to complicate religious things. See? You got to do this and that and wear this and that and go here and go there and eat this and that. It's always a lot of technicalities. In it, see, but the gospel was presented in in its simplicity, based on love, based on faith. So Paul say, "Hey, you Corinthians, you're you're starting to get carnal. You're getting into the church denominations. You're getting into these restrictions and these things you wear and things you say and places you go and different things." The simplicity of Christ is so simple to understand. God loves you dearly. He cares about you. He wants to be your friend. He wants to have a relationship with you. So simple. Love is a simple thing. See, religion is a complicated thing and hurts people. They want to set up different rules and regulations so when you don't do them, you can be condemned. <laughs> By the familiar spirit, then they bring you guilt and condemnation because you're not performing the way God wants you to perform. You're not dotting all the I's and crossing all the T's. You're not a Christian. No, it's all love. See, that's why people backslide. Oh, I didn't do this, I didn't do that. Hey, listen, you backslid, but you're still an incredibly loved person. And God wants you back now. And he's not criticizing. He understands what happened to you. Love covers a multitude. It's so simple, the simplicity of Christ. Jesus paid the debt for my sin. I am perfect in the eyes of God and my spirit man. I've been redeemed through love, faith. Childlike faith is simple to understand. People make faith technically. you got to figure it all out. It, pick it. No, no, you just open your heart and reach out. I love you. Translation keep it simple, stupid. <laughs> See, these thoughts of the simplicity of Christ shrivel away like a cloud shrivels away over the horizon. That's what Paul's saying there. That's what, that's what that word means. If someone comes preaching, let's go to another now, Alos, an, another Jesus that sounds like the real Jesus, okay? Like your buddy. That's another Jesus. That sounds like the real Jesus, you know, loving and holding children in the millennium and all that. That, that sounds like the real Jesus, see? If they come preaching... A Jesus that sounds like the real one whom we have not preached or you receive another now now here's the word heteros a different spirit see <clears throat> you can preach a Jesus that sounds like the real one but a demon spirit and the Holy Spirit are polar opposites they're totally different this one tries to impersonate that one this one has nothing to do with that one under any circumstances other than drop kicking them out of your life. Or another, heterodifferent, different gospel. 
See, this is the one that floods our televisions on TBN and the church channel. All these crazy doctrines flooding through Christianity. That's a different gospel. Okay? The prosperity gospel was a different gospel, not another gospel. Galatians chapter 1. I marvel that you are so soon removed from him who called you into the grace of Christ to heteros, a different gospel. See, if you take Judaism and you mix it with Christianity, you come up with heteros, a totally different gospel. A gospel based on works. Christianity is based on love and faith. Your works don't improve your position in the eyes of God. Because while you were yet sinners, Christ died for you. You're loved the same when you were a sinner as you are now as a saint. Hey, there's a different gospel out there, folks. You've got to use your discernment. There isn't another gospel. Alos, there isn't one that's similar to the real one. They're all different gospels. If you take a look at them, you can tell it. Like that Bible that guy was talking about just a minute ago. They're preaching a different gospel in that Bible. It's a thought translation, and the thoughts are, are wrong. There are some that trouble you, and they do what? They pervert the gospel of Christ. Once you make it complicated, you've perverted it. Though we are an angel from heaven, preach any other gospel to you, or a different one. They are to be what? Wow, this is unbelievable. You wouldn't expect Paul to say something like this. Anathema means to be cursed and excommunicated. That's the worst thing you could do to somebody. But they committed a hideous crime. They took the simplicity of Christ and they blended it in with demonic religion. And that ruins the gospel. If you take light and dark and you mix them together, darkness wins. If you are a Christian and you're living in sin, the sin will win and you will lose. A little leaven leavens the whole lump. You cannot compromise your faith and survive. You will die. Romans 8. You've been called by God to be sanctified. You've been called to sanctification. Sanctification is a bifurcated concept, right? Your spirit man's already perfectly sanctified, but your life is not. Your life is a work in progress and a gradual sanctification. Your mind gradually renews. Your soul gradually heal, heals. If you're not being sanctified and you're, you've got sin in your life and you're keeping it there and you don't care, it's going to eventually get you. Here in Arizona, if you go into the doctor, you got a little spot in here. A lot of those spots are melanoma here in Arizona. Highest, highest state in the country for melanoma right here. Well, if you say, well, it's just a little spot, no big deal, whatever. Hey, that little spot. Is going to turn into the gates of hell. It spreads. You leave sin in your life. You leave bitterness in your soul. You leave chronic negative thoughts in your mind. Hey, you're going down. I don't care if you read your Bible all day long. You're going to lose. Why? Because the Bible says you are to come out from among them. And be you separate, saith the Lord. I will receive you. You're supposed to be a shining light on a hill that cannot be hid. Not some half-baked religious kook who's got good works and a bunch of rotten sin hiding in their pocket. That's church Christianity. That's what church is. Oh, but they're down there praising. Yeah, they're all down there at Hillsong, partying, doing backflips, laser light shows, running around. Yeah, but what are they tomorrow? 
Yeah, hello? This thing's not working. Let's keep going. How do Christians get familiar spirits? Thanks for asking. Man, you've got to open a door. Now, here's what I want to talk to you about. Before you became a Christian, somebody opened a door into the world of New Age, spiritualism, witchcraft, false religion, whatever it was. Or you had a family tree that had false religion or spiritualism in it or something like that. Now, these demons got in the tree here, and then they come down through the tree to get you. Somebody let them in, you know. Demons can't just come here tonight and pick you up and haul you off. They don't have that kind of power. They have to have somebody cooperate with them. You've got to work with them, see? They need you to develop an attitude problem so they can get in. They need you to develop a lust problem. They need you to develop a chronic negativity problem. They need you to develop a, uh, a prejudice, racist problem. That's when they get in. But these demons fly in when you get involved with spiritual things. And many Christians never go through deliverance after they get saved, but they were involved with spiritual stuff as a kid, Ouija boards, light as a feather, goofing around, and they thought it was a game. That's what the demons do. They make things seem fun, but then they get in. And so later on, as a Christian, they have all kinds of spiritual problems. They can't overcome. And that's how they get in. They get in when you're young. They get in when your family gets involved in Santeria, witchcraft, whatever it is. They come flooding in. If you get involved in these kind of things before you got saved or after you got saved, some Christians do this stuff after they're saved. Hypnosis, very dangerous. Uh, healing oils with spiritual qualities that heal your soul and soothe your mind. Those are all demonic. Don't, do not use those kind of drugs. Horror movies. Oh, I like horror movies. It's fun to get scared. No, it's not. You'll be, you're going to be getting scared at home alone pretty soon. It's not going to be a movie doing it. It's going to be one of them following you home. They got inside you in the movie. They, they, they stalked you down. They hunted you down. Yeah, it's not funny anymore. Dungeons and Dragons, Bloody Mary, all this stuff, it all triggers the moving of these familiar spirits. The charismatic movement has been overrun by these kundalini spirits. They're familiar spirits that specialize in the prophetic and charismatic movements. They're specifically designed to deceive charismatics and Pentecostals because they have to give them a show and they have to give them new interesting doctrines that are just fascinating. They really blow your mind. Oh my gosh. Dominionism. We're taking over the world. Christians are going to take over everywhere. <laughs> We're in the second apostolic age. <laughs> Jeez, I didn't know that. Now you do, fool. Oh my God, in 2001, God restored the apostles and prophets. Oh, I didn't get the memo. All these crazy doctrines, they, they invent them all. See, it's a trick. They're sucking you in. There aren't any new doctrines. Oh, that's, that's blasphemy. No, it isn't. You come down here at this altar night and repent of your sin. The Holy Ghost will jump all over you. That's not a new doctrine. That started in Acts. That's the only doctrine you need to hear tonight. <laughs> you come down here and get rid of these familiar spirits and repent of this witchcraft in your family tree and your, your new age stuff, you can be delivered tonight. That's an old doctrine. See, the old rugged cross still works just fine. Amen. Courts of heaven. Here's the courts of heaven right here on your knees. The court, the heaven will come right to you. I'm going to go to the courts of heaven and plead my case before God. Really? Who made you a lawyer? Ignorant. Why don't you fall down here and plead for mercy and repent of your sins? You'll get more than the courts of heaven. You get the Holy Ghost over here. I don't like this kind of teaching. Well, then don't come here. 
<laughs> the third wave is here's another great familiar spirit doctrine the seven mountains oh, we're taking over the seven mountains we're moving in on the secular world yeah how's that how's that going for you yeah, yeah. we're taking over Hollywood who no no <laughs> Not taking over Hollywood. Honey. We're gonna take over the arts. Nah. Really? Stop. Stop it. Stop. Let's continue in this church vein here the kundalini spirits. I got a separate seminar on this just briefly touch on it here these kundalini spirits are super smart and They Really know what you need. Here's what they need. They specialize in Charismatics Pentecostals and prophetics because they know these three groups of people want something miraculous They don't bother they don't bother with Methodists Lutherans Episcopals They don't go over there you know why They're not interested in a miracle Pentecostals Charismatics They want to see something they want to feel something Say they want to feel something or feeling people Which is a deception in itself you walk by faith not by feelings, but not Pentecostals and Charismatics Oh, I got to feel something. They know that. And they give it to you. They give you these sensations in your body. They give you these Holy Ghost jerks. You got the hose. Ho! The ho! Oh, what are you doing that whole thing for? I got the morning, brother. Ho! No, look, you got a familiar spirit. Get that out of there. Kundalini in there. They give you all these physical things. Oh, my hands are tingling. I'm on fire. Oh, my God. You're not literally on fire. Calm yourself down. If you can get a sensation, I'll give it to you. Euphoria is their favorite one. Oh, I felt so. Wow, this is great. I'm going to fall on the ground and roll around. They love good works. These kundalini spirits will tell the people, listen, you got to start saving these sex slaves coming up from Mexico. You got to save these kids. And that's a good thing. Saving the kids is great. They, they come up with good things to do. They're smart. <coughs> They're smart. They pass around in the services. They transfer. They use... They use these lines where people go through and get prayer, you know, tunnels, fire tunnels. They go through and everybody lays their hands on them. I saw that in, in a couple of services several years ago, and I knew one of the guys praying for him, and I knew he had porn addictions. You go through the line there, you don't know who that person is putting their hands on you, but they're transferring these kundalini spirits into you. It's a trick. It's a trick. We are jerking around with euphoria. Oh, wow, oh God. That's them. They're tricking you. Oh, my gosh, brother. I got oil pouring out of my face. Can you get a bucket and save that? We can sell. Okay. They give you physical experiences and euphoria and Stuff that entertains you is what they've got there. Got to be very careful with these things. These spirits are smart. How do they get how do they uh, stretch around like this? They all these guys are praying over people. I'm downloading something into this person, I'm transferring gifts into this person. I'm downloading blessings into this person. They put their hands on you. you. Transfer moves in. 
happens all the time Don't lay your hands on them Keep yourself hagnos uncontaminated don't let somebody put their hands on you and pray for you if you don't know who that person is you can pick up a transfer you say, well, they seem like they're a great Christian. That's the point. They don't send somebody in who's a complete imbecile, acting a fool. They send somebody in who's a nice person. You can't fool anybody sending somebody in who's argumentative and nasty and angry and stinks and dresses like a dog. You got to send somebody in who looks good, smells good, wearing a Levi shirt. Send them in. <laughs> That's how you fool people. These demons aren't stupid. They think about stuff. Christians don't. They just react to things. These spirits think. They plan stuff out. In the Toronto Blessing, they had people that were under the anointing over here. This one was crawling around like a snake. That guy there was barking. This one was howling. Ow! And nobody knew anything about demons in that movement. And so these familiar spirits got in there and tricked everybody. Well, if it's supernatural, it must be God. No, no. I read those scriptures to you. False prophets can perform signs and wonders. It said it right in the text. You got to use your discernment. And you got to use your biblical knowledge to screen out these miracles. Barking like a dog is not a sign from God. No, it's it's not. <laughs> Acting like a lion. <laughs> I got the anointing. No, dude, you've got kundalini. You don't walk around. Whoa, it's a lion of Judah. See, they're smart. The demons go, you're the lion of Julia. Go ahead and growl at that girl. <laughs> she she poops her pants. You, you're acting like the lion of Ju You see how they do it? They pull the scripture out of context. They, they fool people and make imbeciles out of them. Aren't, aren't you seeing this? It's so foolish. They're growling, yelling. Oh, well. All right, let's skip that. We'll do that next time. Here. Uh, Kundalini activations. If you have anybody that teaches these kind of doctrines, this is a huge red flag. Okay? Huge. Very, very few Christians get a real heavenly visitation they're, they're they're very rare they don't pass these out like candy no if you're taking trips to heaven red flag you're infected that's astral travel you, no you're not being you're not going to heaven brother Mike I bought a bunch of books about it. kids who went to heaven okay just trash the things Trash them. Well, they were in surgery and then they were in heaven. They were playing ping pong with angels. Okay, stop. Stop it. It's a familiar spirit dream. They're making this stuff up. You're not in heaven picnicking with Jesus. You didn't go there. You know, I've had several people tell me they've been to heaven. Several. Dozens. I ask them about it. What did you do when you were in heaven? <coughs> what did it look like? Who was there? <coughs> Who'd you talk to? Who talked to you? I got nothing but bad answers. Nothing but bad answers. They remembered less about heaven than they did their trip to on a cruise. If you ask them about the cruise, they'll tell you about everything. They didn't tell you what they ate. Ask him about the trip to heaven. Oh, John, you know, I don't remember. Uh, I'm not sure. What kind of clothes was Jesus wearing when you were jogging around with him? 
on? I don't know. I think it was a robe. You think it was a robe, but you when you went on a cruise, you told me exactly you had fried chicken. You know, you remember the fried chicken, but you didn't remember what Jesus was wearing when you were rolling around heaven with him. Is that is that what you're telling me? By the time I'm done, they realize they're infected. It's all a fraud. Jesus didn't fall for it. <laughs> There's all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. Look at that. I'll give all this to you. All you got to do is kneel. He didn't kneel. I recommend you don't either. Space travel, dream encounter, all this stuff. They use all this stuff constantly. And people love it. They, they, they can't wait to have it. If you've ever heard these terms uh, out there, red flag on it, be careful. Everybody wants something sensational. Everybody wants something great. Oh, my goodness. While I'm interviewing this person, they've been traveling to heaven. They've seen angels. They've been doing all kinds of stuff. But they can't stop yelling at their spouse. Wait a minute. Let's see what you're, you're getting trips to heaven. You're going up to see Jesus, but you're still yelling at your husband. Is that right? Hmm. You think about that. I wonder what God would prefer you do. Stop arguing and fighting or take a trip with him to heaven and go bowling with Jesus. <laughs> Let me think about it there. Hmm. Because I got discernment. No, folks, it's called common sense. Okay? God wants you to stop. Stop the little things you're doing. That's what he's after. He wants you to change your life. And he wants you to stop blowing your stack. Stop criticizing people. Stop condemning yourself. Okay? You don't need a trip to heaven. You need to change. You need to repent. Oh, but we're going to a prophetic meeting. There's thousands of people there. Hey, listen, they're all good people. They're I, I've met hundreds of them. They're good people. Let's not criticize them. I met a bunch of the minister. They're good people too. They care. They're they love God. They're not Satan worshippers. No, they're good. They're good Christians. <coughs> good Christians can be deceived. It happens all the time. I met a Baptist minister one time. Man, he was a fantastic person. Didn't believe in divine healing. Didn't believe in it. But he was a great guy. Well, the guy's deceived. God still heals today. He didn't. The guy was tricked. He got tricked. He got too much teaching at the seminary. Okay? But the familiar spirits are at the seminary. They teach these people these false doctrines. Miracles died out with the apostles. Well, that was taught in a seminary by a familiar spirit using a professor who was spiritually ignorant. It's that simple. It's in rocket science. I mean, this is what they do. Okay. A few more questions here. Take a break, and then we'll pick it up next time there. Oh, okay. Where's that? A microphone. Oh, thank you. Right here. Right over here. Thank you. Oh, so you were talking about the Kundalini and the, oh, what was it, the Obeya thing? Obeya, is that what you were talking about earlier? What? Oh, uh, the OB, you know what I'm saying? The Hebrew word? Yeah. Ob, O-B-E. O-B-E? Yeah. Ob. Okay. Because I thought you, there's a movie right now, it's called Obeya, O-B-E-Y-A-H. Hmm. I was just wondering if you knew like the spiritual root of that. Like, I, don't I, don't, know. No, I don't, I never heard of it. <clears throat> What's it about? It's a Kundalini, actually it's a, a brother of mine and uh, He's like, oh, it's like they're all kundalini, and he's talking about astral projecting. He wanted me to come. Oh, it's at the Dream Center, the church Dream Center. Oh, and they're really like uh, getting into that. And he's like really trying to like convince me, like, oh, you know, like I astral project, and you know, like he started like things started raining on him, like <laughs> rain started literally coming down. <laughs> yeah, I was like no, but like that's 
It's yeah. not, you know, but, yeah. you know, God bless him. You know, so. Yeah. The Dream Center, it used to be Phoenix First Assembly. <clears throat> Tommy Barnett's a great man of God. He's getting old. Everybody gets old. And everybody gets replaced. And now the, ma the big churches have to go to the Kundalinis. They have to. Because they don't have any other way of attracting people. They have to have the seeker-friendly music, the big bands, the high-tech videos. If you don't have that, you can't attract the big, big crowds. You know, the Generation Zers, they don't go to church. They need to be entertained in. Generation X are the same way. You're going to see that trend go huge. I wouldn't. Ex I would expect Dream City to go that way. It's the only way you can compete. You got to compete with the other mega churches. They all compete with each other, by the way. We don't compete with anybody here. This isn't a church or a healing center. So we're not trying to build a giant empire here. We're trying to get people healed. Yeah, my question is, um, what do you recommend if, if you're at a church where there is a demonic happening and you keep getting filled with the same... Uh, there's the Holy Spirit and there's also another spirit there and it kind of switches back and forth. But the Holy Spirit keeps pushing you and telling you to go there and go there and go there. And uh, you he'll, he'll warn you, like, watch out, don't let them pray for you this time. And then, you know, sometimes you get confused because you're tired or whatever. And then as soon as you miss that step, it's like, bam. And then and you know, right, when they laid hands on you, you could literally felt the thing. But a lot of other times, the Holy Spirit will say, come up, and, and you'll get blessed by, by God. So that's my question. What's your recommendation how to deal with that? Um, don't go there. Well, that's a debatable subject. I'd have to research that one. Yeah, because God would never tell you to do something that would hurt you because he loves you too much. So you got to keep it simple. Love <coughs> is the key to Christianity. And so uh, I... Again, answering that guy's question, my background is so bad to answer that question because I've had so many people come to me for counseling who have had ministries fall apart on them. And God told them to go to this country or that group or start this church, do that, and then the whole thing fell apart. It turned out to be demons telling them to do it. They got tricked. So I've seen that happen so much. The, to answer that question, I would say err on the side of caution. Because if you pick up a transfer, if it's a powerful demon, you may never get that thing out of there. But Why I'm risk gonna... it? Back yeah. right here. Um, what's your take on the, I think her name is, the last name is Baxter, who wrote all the, yeah, Mary Kay Baxter. No, Thank you. No. Because she's pretty detailed. I've always been curious about no. that. No, I read her books. Okay. Yeah. Um, <laughs> They're all familiar spirits. I could have wrote that book. Okay. Um, the second Here's question. how you can figure it out. <clears throat> if somebody says, I went to hell. Okay. If they come back from hell, they're going to have all kinds of information that you couldn't just guess at from reading the Bible. You know, so in Mary's book, she comes back and, oh, there's these pits, and these people are in their pits, in these pits. Remember that? You read that book? You didn't read it? Well, anyway, Mary said there's pits in hell. Well, the Bible says there's pits. Oh, well, there's fire in the pits. Well, the Bible, so I could sit down and just use a little imagination, I could come up with. There's pits in hell, and people are in the pits, and they're burning. That wouldn't be that hard, would it? That's not. A, that's, that wouldn't take my IQ, which is average. I could come to that conclusion. You know, when you read those books, I went here, I went there, you're looking for intimate details that nobody's ever heard before. Things that are like, oh my goodness, that's amazing. Thank you. Um, another question, I feel kind of stupid asking this, but is there like a Halloween spirit, a specific spirit of Halloween, some high ruler spirit that has control 
over the practices of Halloween. Of you know? course, yeah. Okay. It's familiar spirits run Halloween. And their main goal is to get the churches involved. They've already got all the sinners. They're all on board. They want the churches involved so they can keep infiltrating them. Churches celebrate Halloween left and right. It's total spiritual insanity. And they throw their kids to the demons. Unbelievable. Even in good churches, they say, we're having a Halloween party for the kids because we don't want them going out trick-or-treating. And I get that. Then they say, well, you can come, to the, but don't dress up in any go goblins or ghouls. You know, just come as a Christmas fairy or Tinkerbell or something like that. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. The demons don't care whether you wear Tinkerbell or you wear a It outfit. They're following you right into the Halloween party. So, you know, kids, kids <coughs> love party. If um, people do a party in different dates, like uh, people can dress up whatever that is not Halloween, it's okay or it's the same thing? Like, for example, okay, uh, uh, I understand like the Halloween day, it's, it's very demon because it's favor one of the favor uh, date for the demons. And uh, my question is, if the people do a party, it's not you know, on the Halloween date. It's a different date for kids. They can dress up, not like monsters, and do a party just for the kids. Is is this okay, or you still can pick up spirits? You're talking about a masquerade party, and not a Halloween party. You know, again, it's a, I guess it's the type of thing you're doing there. If they're coming dressed as demons and monsters and so on, there's no difference. It would be the same thing. When I lived in Sin, I, I celebrated Halloween mm -hmm. every year. You know, we had an office party, Halloween party. You know, you, it was a fun time. You, you, you get drunk, you uh, drink, you... Yell and scream, you let off steam. You know, ha Halloween is a center. It's, it's a lot of fun. I enjoyed it. I didn't understand the spiritual ramifications of it. I didn't get it because I was living in sin. I was ignorant. I didn't realize I was slowly killing myself. When I found out about it, I never celebrated it again. You know, but I lived in ignorance as a sinner. That's what a sinner is. They're ignorant. <coughs> Yes. Anybody else? I have a okay. Is it safe to allow people to lay hands on you based on what I've learned from your teachings and especially in America? Is it ever, I, it doesn't seem very safe to let people lay hands on you, even if you know them. I mean, you don't know what kind of life they're living. Yeah, exactly. And when do you take that too far? I mean, the Bible is clear that the elders are supposed to lay hands on you, but in this day and age, I don't personally think it's even safe. Yeah, it's risky. You know, if you don't know them, yeah, yep, you don't know what they're right. doing. Got a point there. Okay. All done? All right. <clears throat> Now let's uh, have a word of prayer, if you don't mind. We'll close out our seminar. Remember, part two, we'll have all our videos next month. Part two of the Familiar Spirit Seminar. Thank you so much for coming tonight. Very grateful, grateful for you being here. Let's pray for a second. Father God, there's some uh, people here tonight that came to the Familiar Spirit Seminar. And in their background, there has been witchcraft and sorcery. When they were living in sin, they may not be practicing it now, but they had it in their background and they never went through deliverance and they're still infected with these spirits from their sinful life and from the family tree. Their parents, the grandparents may have been involved in masonry, witchcraft, sorcery, new age, and these demons are extremely dangerous and they must be cast out and they 
are not smarter and not more powerful than the Holy Ghost, not by a long shot. And there's some people here tonight who have had this in their background and they're suffering with physical illnesses, mental illnesses, spiritual illnesses because of these powerful demons. There's some people here tonight who have been to prophetic and charismatic meetings and they've had strangers put their hands on them. And they did not know them. They just assumed. They assumed they were godly people. They assumed they had repented. They assumed they didn't have familiar spirits. And they picked up a transfer. They felt something go into their body. They felt a euphoria, a tingling, some weird, <coughs> weird experience. Come out, devil. They felt a weird experience. And that spirit has got to come out tonight because... Lord, I know that he's going to try to cause a physical illness in that person later on in life. And they're going to try to destroy their destiny <coughs> and ruin their lives. And those spirits have to come out. Father, in the name of Jesus, I take authority over every religious spirit in this room. There's some people here that came out of false religions or came out of legalistic Christian denominations and they picked up spirits from those denominations legalism false doctrines religious requirements condemnation people used to be in other religions demonic religions the Church of Christ Kundalini spirits prophetic services seminars all of it the demons infiltrate lord they're infiltrators they're they must be stopped tonight in the name of jesus they must release their victims tonight there's some people here tonight who have familiar spirits in their brain and they've got all kinds of religious thoughts floating through their mind constantly they're never at peace they lay down at night and their mind starts racing and they can't sleep they constantly think about religious things church things spiritual things there's some people here tonight that have familiar spirits and they have nightmares, horrible bad dreams. Those need to leave tonight. They need to come out in the name of Jesus. There's some people here tonight with familiar spirits who have lost their enthusiasm to repent and to serve God and to change. They're just coasting in a world of nothingness. The demons just numb them down. Now they're Accomplishing nothing for the Lord Those are familiar spirits. They must come out tonight. They must leave tonight and The Lord I've done the best I could to teach about these things. I showed them your scripture I showed them your word come out devil. I showed them your word. i done the best I could but You know, I don't have any ability to help anybody. You know, I don't have anything Come out it's the Holy Ghost that has everything. I don't have nothing. So I'm looking to Jesus, the author and finisher of my faith, the beginning and the end of my faith. Jesus, the Son of God, defeated every single familiar spirit at the cross of Calvary. The blood that Jesus shed crushes their power. If we will repent, surrender, and change, if you've got any occult or new age or witchcraft or masonry in your background and you feel like you might have been you might have been infected just stand up real quick so we want to pray for you tonight you got some witchcraft or sorcery in your backgrounds so you come from Mexico you got Santeria or some witchcraft Horrible witchcraft all over South America. It's everywhere You've got mason spirits in your family tree. Those are extremely dangerous demons They cause terrible sicknesses terrible mental illnesses They must bow To the blood of Jesus tonight <coughs> Been in new age when you were young playing around with spiritual things you went to the new age shop and bought a bunch of books Oh, that's extremely dangerous to do. Extreme danger. 
reading spiritual books you were maybe you came out of another religion particularly Catholicism You've got Catholic Mother Mary Pope demons in your family tree extremely dangerous spirits powerful familiar spirits they must go tonight they must go tonight Mormonism extreme danger those demons are powerful and intelligent Jehovah's Witnesses powerful spirits of deception and delusion they must come out tonight you may already have weird familiar spirit illnesses. You may already have it tonight. Tonight you get healed. Tonight you remove those spirits. Will you do it? Will you do it? Will you repent of it? I'll help you. Dear Jesus, I repent of the horrible sins of my ancestors, my parents, my grandparents, all of it. I repent of their witchcraft and sorcery and masonry and shrinery. I repent of Mormonism and Joe, all this phony religion, all this Catholicism, mysticism. I repent of this mystics reading New Age books. I went to the bookstore and I was looking for spiritual things. I was only trying to help myself. I went there innocently. You went there innocently and then you got infected on purpose. The demons took you on purpose. You came in innocently. They took you on purpose. They were waiting for you to go in. Maybe you come from another country heavily infected with witchcraft, South America, Africa, whatever it is. Whatever it is. Those spirits followed you to America, to the United States. They're here from there. Lord God, I repent of it in the name of Jesus. Every sin my grandparents and my parents were involved in, every form of witchcraft, I renounce it right now. I renounce it in the name of Jesus. All of it. Santeria, I bind your powers. Hinduism, I bind your powers. The demons from Islam, I bind your power in the name of Jesus. New Age, I bind your power in the name of Jesus. Prophetic spirits, fire tunnel demons, prayer tunnel spirits. I come against you with the blood that Jesus shed. I repent of what I did, Lord. Listening to these false doctrines and being indoctrinated foolishly by new teachings Somebody made up I repent of it right now all of it in the name of Jesus I repent of it every false doctrine I ever learned every lie I ever had all of it I turn my back on it right now in the name of Jesus. I just repent of it right now. Lord God forgive me Lord Jesus forgive me Right now. I ask you to forgive me dear Lord help me right now Every form of witchcraft and sorcery. Stay here. Every form of witchcraft and sorcery. Every bit of it. I renounce it right now in the name of Jesus. I renounce it right now in the name of Jesus. I say it. All forms. Mother Mary spirits. Pope demons. Rosary spirits. Chanting spirits. Channeling demons. Seance spirits. All of it. I turn my back on it right now in the name of the Lord. I repent of it right now. These religious demons that made me lukewarm and indifferent. I don't have any fire anymore. I can't even cry anymore. I just sit and vegetate spiritually. I bind that horrible spirit of religion that's destroying your life right now. I bind that horrible spirit of religion right now in the name of Jesus. And I command every spirit, familiar spirit Haunting me or my children Haunting my family or me. I command every Witchcraft and sorcery spirit right now To come out of my body in the name of Jesus Christ. I command you you ugly familiar spirit I command you to come out of my body right now in the name of Jesus come out right now in Jesus mighty name breathe Come out of that body right now. Take a breath come out of there go come out of my body right now in Jesus mighty name Every lust demon, every spirit of witchcraft, every demon, the chanting, chanting, seance, channeling, come out of me right now. Come out of me right now. Go in Jesus' mighty name. Now go. Get out of my body. Every sickness that familiar spirit gave me, every sickness I got from witchcraft. 
Come out of my body right now in the name of the Lord. Come on. Right now, come out. Come out right now in Jesus' mighty name. Come out in the name of the Lord. Come out in Jesus' holy name. Come on out. Come on out in the name of the Lord. Come out right now. Come out quickly. I command every evil spirit from Mexico. Every witchcraft demon from Roman Catholicism. Get out of my body right this second. Come out right now. Get out of my mind. Here, have a seat right here. Sit down. There you go. Come on up. Go now. Get out of my body right now. Mind control. Come out of my head. In the name of Jesus Christ, I command you. Religious demons, I command you to come out of my head right now. Right out of my head right now. Go right now. Jesus, come on out right now. Go. Go right now. Religion, come on out. Religion, come out. Get out of my head in the name of the Lord. Come out of there right now. Go now. Go now. Come on out. Come out of me. Come out of me right now. Satan, loose your hold. Satan, loose your hold. Come on. Get out of my body right now. Come on. There he is right there. Come on out. Come out of my stomach. Come out of my stomach now, quickly. Come on out. Come out of there. Come out of my body right now. Hurry up. Come out of there, you witch. Come out, you warlock. Go. You spirit of fear, I command you. Come out of this woman of God. Get out of that body right now. You come out of there right now. Hurry up. Hurry up. Now. Kundalini. Church demons. Demons from pastors. Demons in the prayer group. Come on out in Jesus' name. Go. Come out of there right now. Get out of that body. Satan, come out of my body right now. Say it. He's right there. See, he jumped right there. Come out of my body. Take a breath and blow. There you go. Blow again. Come on out. Spirit, come out now. Quickly. Come out right now. Come on out. Keep blowing. Come out. Come out right now. Fear. Fear. Come out now. Quickly. Quickly. Fear. Come out. Go. Go. Come out of there. Go now. Keep blowing. Devil, come out of me right now. Rejection. The spirit of rejection. Come out of me. Loneliness. Loneliness. Come out. Spirit of infirmity and sickness. Come out of my body right now. Come out of my tummy. Right now. Come out. Tell him to go. Come out right now. Go. Go now. Go now. Come out. Go now. Come out. Come on out. Come out of that body right now. Get out of that body right now. There he goes. Come on out. Quickly. Come out. Go. The demon wasting your life. Come out of there right now. Wasting my life. Come on out. Go now. Get out of my head. Mind control. Come out of my head. Mind control. Come on now. Come out. Come out of there. This is the end. This is the end for me. This is the end. No more going back to sin when I get home. No more taking offenses from my parents. No more living like a coward. Come out of there. Get out of that body right now. Hurry up. Come out of there. Go now. Come out. Go. Come out of there right now. What you need, honey? What happened? What's wrong with you? No more headaches. You got headaches? No more headaches. You got a headache? Did you say headache? Pray no more headaches. You have headaches at night? Afternoon. Afternoon? Okay. Raise your hands. Are you are you a Christian? Are you a Christian? You want to become a Christian? Yeah, raise your hands out there. Dear Jesus, pray after me. Dear Jesus. Dear Jesus. Hey, she needs to get saved. Would you lead her in a repentance sure. prayer, salvation sure. prayer? Satan, come out right now. Satan, you get out of that body right now. Go. 
YouTubers, put your hand on your body, your chest, your stomach, and command the familiar spirit to come out. Satan, come out. Go. Come out now. Come out now. No, tell the demon to come out. Tell him to come out. Get out of, no, tell him to come out. Come out right now in Jesus' name. There you go. Come out of my head. Come out of my brain. Come out of my brain. Tell him to come out. Come out right now. There you go. Just get mad at him. Get mad at him. There you go. Come out, you pervert. You pervert. Come out of that body right now. You pervert. You pervert. Come out. Thus saith the Lord. Come out. Come out right now. Come out of there. Liar. Come out of my body right now. You're not going to kill me. Yeah. Come on out. I repent of my sins. I repent of lusting for children. I repent of it right now. Go. I repent of the shame. The shame of it. Shame. I command you to come out. What you need, honey? Um, I have a real bad cocaine addiction. Oh, okay. Now. Yeah. Now, come here for a second. Cocaine's not the problem. Uh, who hurt you when you were younger? Um, my my, uh, my cousin, and then uh, my my dad. What'd your dad do to you? And then I got raped a few times. What'd your dad do to you? Uh, he would sleep with my mom, and then he would touch me. Oh, he fondled you. Your dad did. What's his name? He's gone now. What's his name? Joe. Joe. Okay. Now. What happened was, when your dad fondled you down there, a spirit from your dad passed into your body. It was a rejection demon. Yeah. And then that demon got in when you were a kid, and then he ruined your life after that. Yes. Right? So, close your eyes. Close your eyes. Open your mouth. Ready? Now, dear Lord Jesus, I ask you right now, to forgive me for any bad feelings I had about my dad when I was young. I had bad feelings about him because he hurt me. He wounded me. My own father wounded me. And this rejection demon has tormented me for years. And this spirit turned me into a coke addict. I use cocaine to escape from the pain in my soul and the embarrassment of what my dad did to me. And my mother didn't support me. And right now, in the name of Jesus, I forgive my dad 100%. I release my dad from my soul right now. And I command my dad's rejection demon to come out now. Come out right now. Take a breath and blow. Come on out. Come out. Come on out. Joe, come out of her. Joe, come out. Joe, come out. Come out right now. Come on out. Joe, come out of that body right now. Joe, come out. Rejection, come out. Come out. Come on out. Come out. Her dad fondled her. His name was Joe. She's got a rejection no. and a coke addict. Come out of there. Come out of there, you pervert. The shame of being attracted to kids. Come out of there. The demon that's attracted to children. Come out of that body right now. Come out of his penis. Come out right now. The demon that hates his parents. Come out of that body. Come on out. Go now. Come on out. Let's go. Come on out. Let's go. Come out now. My sister Mike, is into Wicca. Who is she? Is no, my sister. This is my wife. Hey, she was just prayed for What's her name. John, yeah, did you did you become a Christian a minute ago? You did. Okay. Now, there's a spirit in your brain causing those headaches. She has headaches. Yeah. Every afternoon. Um, almost every day. Yes. Every day. You have headaches? Okay. Come here for a second. Right. Put your hand on your head there. Just repeat after me. In the name of Jesus, I command this spirit to come out of my brain right now. Go. 
Go. Breathe. Breathe out of your mouth. Ready? Spirit, come out now. Go. Go. Did you sense anything when you were praying that prayer? You feel happy? You do? All right. Go ahead and start giggling. Raise your hands. Go. Keep going. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. My sister that's into Wicca, I wanted to. Where is she at? Intercept. She's not here. No, she won't have anything to do with that because I, I am a Christian. She's yeah. into Wicca. Yeah, Wicca. Wicca Dangerous. believes that um, females are the God, you know, the head of the house and all that stuff. Um, it's all, all demons. She just practice homosexuality. But, um, she was in the hospital a couple of months ago having a, some kind of operation for cancer. And I went in there, and she didn't recognize me, and when she walked in behind me, she goes, No, I said, get them out of here. I don't want them in here, brother. I was a demon, y'all. Yeah, yeah. Um, oh, yeah, man. I've had, I've had God work many things through me. I even wrote a book about all the experiences, most of the experiences. Oh, really? Great. Yeah. Uh, had a Daniel and Lion's Den experience with lion hunting dogs. And I walk in this garage and these dogs, one of them stood up and fell almost immediately. But the three of them could not even stand up. My brother said, the dog started crawling, looking at me, crawling toward me, whining like puppies. And my brother says, those dogs have never done that before. I just told him, that's the spirit of God on me. And he walked out and left me in there with those killer dogs. <laughs> I went to each dog and they just rolled over on their side, laid on their side. And I got I had it's a miracle. Yeah, yeah. Say thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Thank you for healing me. Thank you, Jesus, for healing me. Amen. Can okay, you giggle all the way home, okay? Nice to meet you. I want to ask you also about uh, Joseph Prince's teaching on communion will heal you. Who? Joseph Prince. Uh, he's doing a teaching that communion heals you. Uh, I, I feel wrong. I feel something's wrong about that. But, uh, so they're always trying to come up with something new. Yeah. Yeah, you can get healed with with communion or without it. Oh yeah, because she just got stripes. healed. She just got healed. <laughs> yeah, we're healed by Jesus, by His stripes. By His stripes, we're healed. Amen. Thanks for coming. Thank you. You thinking pervert? You look, attracted the babies now? Come out of that body. <laughs> attracted the children? You pig? Come out of that body right now. You stinking pig demon, come out right now. Hurry up. <coughs> How you doing? What's going on? I um I just wanted to make sure that I was okay. All the other things that you were talking what? about with the Kundalini spirit and stuff, I went on a fast and, you know, self deliveries. I just wanted to make sure that I was okay because... Now, uh, ho hold on. Do you have any symptoms? Right now, I um, I'm going to tell you something something's wrong happening. with you. Something's happening. Like, um, it's... And, okay, it's birds. It's these things with these birds. What birds? And my daughter recognizes it, too. I'm talking about, like, out, like real birds, not spirits. They follow you around? It's like they... What I, I pray so that when they come, they'll repel. Yeah. <laughs> now, that sounds like witchcraft. Did somebody put a spell on you or something? What happened? I had a problem with an apostle. I went to a ministry last year and they told me that the reason why that I couldn't get married all those years was because she didn't want me to be married and she was blocking me from being married. And ever since I've been here, I up until recently, I haven't been able to date. And then the other thing is, it's like something happened with my my thinking, like my memory, and I lost my nursing career five years ago, and and I it's five years been, ago, yeah, and it's just been downhill. Yeah, yeah, something got in. Yeah. And a, and they put a curse on you. Yeah. Okay. Close your eyes. Father God, I lift up that apostle and his wife. 
both those uh, false ministers, they were deceived. I lift them up to you and I ask you to bless them and forgive them. I ask you to help them and bless them and forgive them. Dear God, have mercy on their souls. The Bible says, love your enemies and bless those who curse you. So right now I'm blessing those people who cursed me and stole my chance to be married and put a marital curse on me. I forgive them in the name of Jesus. And I command this spirit that got into my brain to come out tonight in Jesus' mighty name. All right, take a breath and blow. Come out of there right now. Come on out. Apostle, come out of there. False apostle, come out of her. Transfer spirit, come out of her head. Come on out. Come out of her body from here to there. Come on out right now. Come out of there. Witchcraft, go. Witchcraft, go. Come on out. Come out of there. Go. Come out right now. Witchcraft and sorcery, I bind your power. Spirit husband, come out. Spirit husband, you stole her life. I command you to come out in Jesus' name. Come on out. Right now. Come out of there. Come out of there. Quickly. Quickly. He's got a spirit husband. Come out right now. Come out of there. Get out of her neck. There he is. That's witchcraft right here. This is witchcraft right there. She got a spirit husband and a witchcraft. An apostle put a curse on her. Apostle put her. Come out right now. Come out right now. Amen. Come out right now. Go. Amen. Amen. Cancel your assignment. Go. Satan, loose your hold. <coughs> you child molester. <laughs> You stinking child molester. Come out of that body right now. Come on out. You child molester. Hurry up and get out of that body. Come out of there now. Go. Lusting for kids. Come out of that body. Quickly. How's it going here? You doing good? Yeah. She's awesome. Praise God. Hey, how you doing? Love you. God bless you. How you doing? You need prayer? How's everything going? Well, I was here uh, September 13th, and I had a deliverance session um, with Rick, and it went wonderful. Oh, great. Anything um, left? Lyme disease. Um, I had Lyme disease for many years. It put me in, like, financial ruin. And, but he prayed over, like, rejection in the womb. My mom wanted to have an abortion. And I, ever since then, I feel 100% cured. Oh, great. But I got a letter a couple days ago in the mail saying that my credit card company was suing me. Um, and that, I feel like that just brought back, like, I have a yeah. good feeling. I feel like the line's starting to come yeah. back. Yeah, here we go. Come out, take a big breath. Blow, let your tears go. Spirit, come out of there right now. Come on out. I command this financial curse to break. Here he is. Break off of her quickly. Break off quickly. Come out of her tummy. Come out right now. Go. Come out of her stomach. Fear. Limes, I curse you. Come out. Limes, I command you to die. Come out. Come on out. Come out. Come out of there right now. Go. Fear and terror. Come out. Come on out. Go. Come out of there. Hey, hold that. Come out right now. Limes, I command you. Go out of that body right now. Come out of her throat. Come out of her, come out of her bloodstream. Come out of the lymphatic system. Come out right now. Limes, I command you. I curse you to failure. Die. Come out. Come out right now. Let your tears go. Come on, sweetie. Holy Spirit, move. Holy Spirit, heal. I command this curse of finances. She's got a financial curse on her. 
I command this financial curse to come off now. Go. Come out. Come out. Jesus come out of there. Come out. Come on out. Come out. Embarrassment and humiliation. Come out of me. <coughs> Hatred from my parents. Hating my parents. I command that evil to come out of me. Evil, come out of me right now. Come out. The demon that's telling you to do that, moving your hands like that, that demon, tell him to come out. Get out of there. Stop moving my hands and my face. Stop Stop making me look like an idiot. Come out of my body right now. Stop embarrassing me. Get out of my body. Stop moving my hands and my face and my legs. Stop it. Come out right now. You filthy sexual pervert. Come out of my body right now. Go right now. Get out of my body right now. Come out of there. Go now. Come out of her stomach. Limes, I curse you. Come out. Die. Come out. Hurry up. Come out quicker. You sorcerer. Come out of that body right now. There he is. Here he comes. Sorcery. Come out of there. Come out of her neck. Come out of her neck. There they go. There it goes. Come on out. Sorcery. Sorcery. There it is. Come out next. Keep coming. Come out quicker. Self hatred. Come out of that body. You man hater. Come out of that body. Sexual experimentation. Come out of that body. Come out of her spine. There he is. Here he comes. Come out of that spine. Come out of that spine, you Puthone spirit. Come out of her spine right now. There it is. He's coming out. You snake. You filthy snake. You dirty snake. Come out of that body. Hurry up. Come out. Right now. Get out of there. Hurry. Come out quickly. Come out of body quickly. Right now. Go. Get out of my body right now. Come out. There he is. There he is right there. Get out of there. Come out right now. There he is. There he is. There he is right there. Get him out. Come out of there. Rage. Anger. Come out of them. Sacrum. Sacrum clear. Sacrum clear. Sacrum clear. Vertebrae clear. Come out right now. Get out of her back. There he is. Come out. Divination. New Age. Spiritualism. Come out of me. Come out of my back. Come on out. Get out of my feet. Come out of my feet. Go right now. Hurry up. Get out of my neck. Come out of my neck right now. Quickly. Hurry up. Get out of there. Come out. Go. Quickly go. Quickly go. Come on that body right now. Get out of there. Get out of that body. What'd she say? Come out of that body. She's just being general. It's not about, um, Get out of there. Um, Come out. Something's got to change. She's at her wit's end. Yeah, she's got a financial curse on her. Come out of there right now. Fear of the credit card company. Fear of being broke. Fear of having limes for the rest of my life. Go in Jesus' name. Fears. Go. Get out of there, you pervert. You stinking pervert. Tell that demon that makes you jump around all the time, tell him to come out. Jumping come demon, come on, go. Hurry up. Go now. Go now. Come on there quicker. Quickly. Come out quickly. Come out right now. Come out right now. Bad men. All the bad men in the name of Jesus. Come out of this body right now. All the criticism and the verbal abuse and all the degradation let her go right now from childhood to this moment come out get out of that body quickly come out quicker hurry up hurry up quicker come out now quickly come out now quickly quickly come out spirit spirit of exhaustion I command you to come out hurry up out you go come on out right now Get out of that body right now. Hurry up. Come on. There he comes. Get out quickly. Come out quicker. Quickly. Quickly come out. Quickly come out. Quickly come out. Go quickly. Quickly come out. Quickly come out. Go. Go now. Quickly come out. Quickly. Quicker. Satan, loose your hold. Quicker. 
Quickly. Quickly, come out. Quickly. Satan, come out. Quickly. Quicker. 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 Quickly. Come out of her brain. Come out in Jesus' name. No dementia. No Parkinson's. No diseases. None. Come out. None. Go. Come on out. Come out. No dementia. No Parkinson's. Come out of there. Come out right now. Quickly, come out. Come out of that body quickly. Quickly, come out of there. Hurry up. Go now. Go now. Go now. Alzheimer's. No Alzheimer's. No. No dementia. No. No fears and worries. Go. I command every sickness to come out of this body now. Go. Sickness, come out. Go. Rejection. Go. Embarrassment. Go. Get out of that neck. Come out of there quicker. Hurry up. Come out of there quickly. Quickly come out. Quickly. Quickly. Go. Quicker. You speak in tongues? You speak in tongues? Go ahead. Louder. Speak it out. Louder. 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 Crank it out. Big. Boom. Come on. Crank it out. Get out of that body quick. Hurry up. You come out of there right now. You hear me? Come out of that body right now. Go. Get out of that body right now. Go. Come out right now. Go. Get out of there. Go. I'm going to march under it louder. Get out of that body right now. Quickly go. Come on out. Spirit, come out of that body right now. Go. Come out of there quicker. Come out, Satan. You get out of her shoulders right now. Come out of that body right now. Come out of her shoulders right now. Go in Jesus' name. <laughs> come out of her right now. Ow. Ouch, she said. You heard her. Come out. Come out of her stomach. Come out of her tummy right now. Go. Come out of my back. You get out of her back right now. Go. Come out of there. Come out of her shoulders or her back. Louder. Louder. You come out of that body. Hey, you're not stopping. Come out of there now, right now. You don't stop. You get out of this woman of God. You get out of the woman of God. Right now. Quicker. You don't stop, you stinking devils. All of them. From the time you were abused as a child until this moment, I command you to come out. Come out right now, quickly. Child abuse. Out. Out. Husband abuse. Go. Husband abuse. Verbal abuse. Verbal abuse. Come out of that body. Verbal abuse. Get out of that back. Come out of her back. Get out of that back right now. Hurry up. Come out of that back right now. Come out of that back right now. Come out right now. Come out of there right now. Quickly. Come out of that back right now. Get out of that body. Get out of that body. Louder. Louder. Come out of that body right now. Speak in tongues louder, louder. Louder. Get out of that body right now. Hurry up. Hurry up. Hurry up. Get out of there. All right. Speak it out. Come out of that body right now. Child abuse. Come out of that body right now. Hurry up. Hey, what's going on with him? I think he's, uh, he was having anxiety, but now he's doing better. Oh, no. what's wrong with that guy? Ryan. Ryan, he was much. What's wrong with him? Carlos? He's yeah. Good. He's good? good? Okay. He's good. Maybe. He's good. What's wrong with him? Um, he still has the um, um, OCD and anxiety. But uh, the medication is much more controlled. Right now what I have, oh. the big problem, 
the big problem with me is I have I always have like a, a sleepy all the time, very fatigued, very tired, very sleepy. Because of the medication? Do, no, doctor found narcolep narcolepsy. narcolepsy. The doctor, the neurologist. They found narcolepsy. Yeah, now? they said that he had narcolepsy, Sorry. and I think it's a demo. Oh. No, that's just more demons piling in. Yeah. Now, the anxiety is caused by what kind of thoughts? No, I don't have. What thoughts. triggers the anxiety? No. Nothing. I, I, I'm very stable in that area. I just, I just have the. I'm all, always sleepy. I'm like tired and fatigued, and I can't even concentrate to read stuff. I want to read something. Is that because of the meds? <laughs> The meds, uh, he's taking too much meds, and I got, they have several side effects. And he's Is that better. one of them? Exhaustion? Tiredness? <laughs> that medication all of them not have, all of them have side effects, all of them have side effects, but they found narcolepsy in me. Yeah. Do you have narcolepsy? <laughs> well, yeah. You do have it? <laughs> what are the symptoms? It, I, I'm all, I wake up and I'm, I'm very tired, very sleepy. I can't get things done because I'm so, my eyes keep closing, I can't, you know, I'm always sleepy, and I'm tired. And, and fall asleep during the day. Sleeps sleep during the day, too? So that's why he cannot work. I can't, I can't, I can't read, I, when I try to read, I can't concentrate, I can't understand what I'm reading. It's like, I'm, 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 I'm I, feel, I feel this thing in my head, I feel this pressure in my head, like I can't, I can't, just do, do many things. When did that start? Uh, when did it start? Maybe months ago, maybe six months ago. Six yeah. months ago. What was going on six months ago? I will say my son is he went to work. He can't. So everything is the same. I just want to be productive. I want I want to do things. I want to work on my website. I want to do things. Things I want to read. Yes, yeah, sometimes he feels he cannot read. He cannot concentrate. Well, that's no, never. I can never. I can never read. Read, read and comprehend. I can't comprehend. Oh, was that true when you were a little kid, or just no, six months ago? Starting lately, maybe lately. a year ago. I can't. I want, I want to read to comprehend, but I can't. I'm just too, too tired, sleepy. How are you doing when you're speaking in tongues? How'd that go? Uh, I haven't practiced it. You haven't done it. How come? No, no he didn't. No. He had. Why not? He's very pessimistic sometimes. He what? Pessimistic, like negative thoughts. You have negative thoughts? No, I, I, I feel frustrated because I can't, I can't do anything lately. I can't, can't do anything because of the narcolepsy. And I want to be productive. I want to do things. I want to read. I want to learn. I want to even read, read the Bible. I want to, you know, help my mom more. I want to do. I want to be productive. And everything is much more controlled with the medication, with OCD, anxiety symptoms, all that. The big problem is that I don't have that I'm so sleepy and so tired and fatigued. Listen, I got a friend of mine that I think would help him. Can I give you his phone number? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Don't, I'll give you a phone number before you Is leave. Counselor? Oops. Yeah. Oh, yes? Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. Okay, I'll give you a phone number before you leave, okay? Okay. <clears throat> What's he talking about? He's talking about he's got a spirit of murder. what? He says he's got a spirit of murder. He's got a spirit of what? Murder. Oh, he's got everything. He hates his parents. And my sister. And I can't, I can't get him to repent. So he can, we can't get him healed. That's what I'm saying. He hates his parents. You start at the basics. You know, the easy stuff first. Hey, I hate my parents. Well, just repent of that first. The, the rest of the sea? Just repent of it. Dear Lord Jesus, I'm sorry I hate my parents. That is a horrible sin. I repent of it tonight. Say it. You get out of that body right now. Come out of, come out of that. You get out of there quick. You get out of that body right now. I'm telling you right now. Get out of that body. Come out of her. Come out of her spine. Come out of that spine. I want you out now. Get out of that body. You're not staying in there. Not tonight. Get out of that body. Come on out. Come out of there. Come out of there. Hey, that demon having you go back and forth like that, tell him to come out. He sticks your hands out. Tell that one. Get him out of there. You get out of there. Get out of my head. I want you out of my head right now. Get out of that body. You get out of there. Get out of that body. Come on, quickly. Like a raccoon hat on my freaking head. Get out of her brain. Get out of that frontal lobe right now. Out of the frontal lobe. Hurry up. There it goes. Thank you, Jesus. Come on out. 
Come on out right now. Hurry up. Get out of there. Hurry up. Come on out. Go. Get out of the sacrum right now. Right there. Come out of that sacrum. Go out of there. Quickly. <coughs> Quickly. Hurry up. Get out of that body right now. Hurry up. Come out of there. Come out of there. Quickly. Come out of that body right now. Get out of that body. Get out of there. Come out right now. Quickly. Quicker. 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 Hey, would you mind going to my office and get me a pen and a Can I buy paper? the deliverance package yet? Hmm? Can I buy the deliverance course you're, yet? You're getting it right now. Come okay. out of that body right now. Get out of that body right now. Yeah, yeah, I mean, uh, uh, sticky. Oh. What do you call those things? Come on, right. come on out. Hurry up. Come on out right now. We're giving these demons a deliverance course. Come on right now. Get out of body. Get out of body. You get a deliverance course, you rotten devil. Come on out right now, quickly. Come on, my feet. Come on, my feet. Come on, my back. Get out of that body right now. Hurry up. Come out of her. Demon poison. Demon poison. Come out of that body right now. Demon poison. Come out of there. Demon poison. Hurry up. Get out of that body right now. Come out quickly. I said come out quickly. Get out of her. Come out of the woman of God. Come out of her back. Come out of her sacrum. Come out of her vertebrae. Come out of her cervical. Right there. Come out of there. There he is. Here he comes. There he comes. Come out. There it comes. There they come. Glory to God. There they come. Another deliverance course. Come on, that body right now. <laughs> Hurry up. Come on there quickly. Quicker. Quickly. Come on there quickly. You get out of that body right now. <clears throat> you, I see you in there. Come on, that body right now. Get out of there. Come on, that body. Don't you try and sneak out. Come on. You don't sneak out. You come out now. There it comes. You don't sneak out. You come out. Get out of that body. Come out of there quickly. Get out of that body. You filthy spirit, I curse you. Come out of there. You let this beautiful woman of God go in the name of Jesus. You let her go. Take that coward spirit out of there. In the name of Jesus. She has got a beautiful anointing and stop blocking it. Now get out of that body. You stop blocking her anointing. Stop it. Stop. Get out of there quicker. Come out quicker. Deliverance course three. Come out of that body. Go now. Come out of there. Quickly. Hey, give this to give this to that lady over there, would you? Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, I'll go get the toy. Excellent. Get out of that body quickly. Hurry. <laughs> quick. Soon. Soon. Quick. Real quick. Real soon. Come out right now. Go now. Yeah. Out. Yeah. Come on. See you looking at me. Stop looking at me and come out right now. Stop looking at me. I said, come out of that body. Leave. Leave. Go look somewhere else. Come on out. Come out right now. Go look somewhere else. Amen. That'll do it. Go now. That'll do it. Go now. Go look at somebody else. There he goes. Come on out. Get out of there. Now you're coming out. Now you're coming out, now you're coming out you filthy pig. Come out of there, you pig. Come out of there, you pig. Get out of that body right now. Go. Hurry up. Get out of there. Go. Hurry up and go. Hurry up and go. Quickly. 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 Satan, loose your hold. Go. Get out of that body right now. Come out of her stomach. You food demon. Food demon. Diabetes. High blood pressure. Go. 
Go. Leave her body. Leave her body right now. I said, hurry up. Come out of there. Come out of there, buddy. Let's go. Push it. Come out of there. Come out. Every spirit go. Every spirit go. Every spirit go. Come out of that body right now. Get out of there. Come out in Jesus' name. Quick guy. Come out quicker. Come out quicker, you monster. Jesus, holy name, go. Come out of his spine, you filthy spirit. Here he is. Here he comes. There he goes. There he goes. Go, Satan. Go. Go. Go, you spirit of terror. Go. Get out of that spine. Thus saith the Lord, go. Holy Ghost, no being will stand before you all the days of your life. Go. Get out of there. Fear. Fear spirit, go. Coward spirit, go. Fear and cowardice, go. Come on out. Fear and cowardice. Get out of there. Come out. Come out. Your voices. The demons that talk to me. Come out of me now. Come out. Witchcraft, sorcery, mental illness, schizophrenia. I curse you. Go. There he goes. Schizophrenia. I bind your power. Come out of this man of God. Schizophrenia. Die. Get out of there. Rejection and rebellion. Go. Rejection. Rebellion. Fantasy lust. Masturbation. Pornography. Get out of there. Go now. Go down. Talking demons go. Talking demons go. Here he comes. Come out. Fear. Come out of that body. Get out. Get out. Get out. Get out. Get out. Get out. Sorcery. Witch, come out there. Demons will talk. Come out. Voices. Go. 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 Amen. Lying spirits. You lying spirit. Come out. Get out of there. There he comes. All lying spirits. There he goes. Lying spirits go. Hallelujah. Get out. Get out. Get out. Come on, that body right this second. Hurry up. Every one of them go. Don't you stop. You just keep coming. You don't stop. You keep coming out. Quickly. Come out. Come out. Get out of there. Come out. Mental illness, I curse you. Come out. Mentally ill, come out. Come out. Come out. Glory to God. Come out, you spirits. Go. Satan, lose your hold. Satan, lose your hold. Yeah, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Son, you got a huge anointing tonight. Use it. You can get rid of anything you want tonight. The anointing is so heavy. The Holy Ghost is here. Satan, come out. 
everything come out of me. All the poisons from medication. Poisons from medication. All the meds. Psychotropic medications. Come out of my body. Leave my stomach. Come out of my bloodstream. Come out of my lymphatic system. Get out of my body. Poison. 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 Out. 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 Come out. You get out of that body right now. Hurry up. Thank you, Jesus. Come out. Next one. Go. Next one. Go. Next one. Go. Get out of there. Hurry up. Schizophrenia. You're done. Schizophrenia. You're done. Voices. You're done. Go. Voices. Religious voices. Christian voices. Come out. Get out of there. Religious voices. Out. Religion. Amen. Come out right now. Come on out right now. Come out right now. Come out. Come out. Come out right now. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Say it. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, dear Lord. I love you. Say it. I love you, Lord. Thank you for helping me. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for helping me. I give you praise, Jesus. Say it. Give you praise, Lord Jesus. Give you glory, Lord. Give you the glory and the praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. I love you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I want to be restored into my right mind. Hallelujah. My right mind. Thank you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. The mind of Christ. Exactly. The mind of Christ. Streamers, this is Brother Mike. I'll be back next Friday with another unusual Bible study. Next month, we'll finish up the Familiar Spirit Seminar. In November, the demons were routed here tonight. It was a vicious beating. The Holy Ghost showed up and kicked, kicked some you-know-what. Right now, you must go to the website, hardcorechristianity.com. Hit the teaching button and go down and read the two articles, Satan's Counterattack and How Satan Controls the Mind. Those two short articles are very important because you will be hit within 48 hours of this service. Within 48 hours, the demons will attempt to reacquire you. If you did not get completely delivered or healed, don't worry about it. Keep going by faith. Do not quit. If you quit, you will die sick. If you don't quit, you will be healed. Do not quit. Send me an email, mike at hardcorechristianity.com. I'll send you the deliverance list and answer any questions you have or comments you'd like to share. We'd love to hear them. See you next time.